Hello everyone and welcome back to Penn State League and our coverage of the 2022 Nittany Invitational. Once again, I am Infamous Trash here to cast Penn State White versus George Brown College in this best of three quarterfinal series. As we are getting ready for the draft real quick, we saw one of the other Penn State teams play just early this afternoon coming out, unfortunately, on the bottom end of NYU. Uh, we'll have to see how Penn State White goes up into this matchup. As we wait for draft to kick off. And Penn State White putting together the roster. Uh, Duck Wings, Gosu, Booster, uh, the Luniverse, Vale, and Chandras as top the bot. George Brown College. Oh, jeez. Why do you guys, why do you top players like do this to me? Jolax, McTavish, Queenado, Jana. Queenado Jana, okay. The Rift Guardian, and I am so sorry for this butchery. Even if I could speak English, I wouldn't get it right. Hui Yong Chong, I think. I think that's how you pronounce that. Maybe I don't know. Someone can tell me in game. It's fine. We'll get there. Such is such is how the world works. It's not even the phonetical. It's not even a phonetics diff like normal. That's just I don't got much to say there. Okay, we wait on draft lol. It looks like it might be broken, so they might have to remake the lobby there. Yeah, we got to remake draft lol. So, third party app causing us a few problems. As we get the new spectate up, switch back to the home screen real quick so I can transition this. And we get this going. All right, and we are into picks and bans immediately. Because we are. All right. Picks and bans are open. We got Ash and Caitlin hitting the bench from George Brown. PSU White taking away Vera. So definitely narrowing down the AD carry pool. TF also interestingly... Taking a backseat. Not a champion we see too terribly often right now. Maybe in a few previous Worlds meta. Uh, was definitely a little bit more higher priority. Seraphine as well. Taking away uh, a Mr. Luniverse special. Head to State White with one more band. We'll see what they want to take away. If they want to pitch away that AD carry pull more. You still have the Jin, you still have the Aphelios, Kaisa still up and available as well. Uh, if that's an angle you want to take it, set away the Hecarim. As I now have a uh, co host here joining me at Soccer Wars. Welcome, welcome. As we Hello. are in draft, I will copy the draft rule again. Got return of the dynamic. The, well. the old school. Yeah. There we go. Draft old school. As we have a very fast first round here. Lee Sin picked up Ezreal oh. Karma for PSU White on one. Okay. Two. All right. Ezreal Karma, you love to see. Very poke heavy. Can win a lot of lanes just right at the level one thanks to Karma's mantra Q. And then Ezreal being yeah. able to follow up. And Lee Sin, one of an all time classic. Playmaker, jungler to get the first pick. It's and... interesting a bit to see it be one, considering Rexai yeah. is doing very well right now, and that champion absolutely slaughters that matchup. It is and not also, close. May maybe not a lot of people are in tune with Rexai gaming. It is creeping up a bit, and it's definitely a more unique jungler. You really have to go all in on the early game because you tend to fall off a bit later. Especially with the build, I believe, tending to be Prowler's Claw into a bit more damage. Uh, Prowler's Claw, you do end up building a Death Dance, so 
Well, Death Dance. You do be uh, you do become item. tanky. You become tanky. You gotta get there first. Yeah. But uh, the Graves and sorry about that stream. Graves pick up for PSU as Nautilus and Jim come through on blue side. Pretty, pretty, pretty point and click. Uh, Nautilus auto attack into Jinru into Nautilus everything else. Pretty dangerous. Especially when you can get free auto attacks as the Jin. You always like to see that. Yep, and now getting in the second round of bands. Katarina taking off, so more the uh, aggressive pop off mid laners, as you could say. Uh, a little bit of a pivot from the TF fan we saw in the first round, but George Brown possibly looking to yeah. push away top mid themselves. They want to really limit that mid pull. You still have a lot of the very good control mages up. Uh, Luniverse, of course, known for his rise, Ari though not blind up. pickable. Ari's still up and available as Very well. good blind pick for the mid lane, especially this far in when you can pinch out some of the more counter matchups like LeBlanc, per chance. But gotcha. Silas Van. Silas Van is always unique because you have such good ultimates like Nautilus and Lee Sin. If Silas can take that, it's very, very powerful. Ah, we have a Kennen ban. Not something we see too often very much either. I'm assuming that's going to be targeted at Hui. So. I mean, when you look at a team like Nautilus and Jin, just having a big AoE team fight oh, from the Kennen in the top lane, and also some AP for the top lane, which might open you up to an AD mid laner, yep. if you so please. I guess it's going to be... Oh, we got a Gwen Hover. Ooh. Has been hit with a, quite a few nerfs recently. Has not been doing as well, but locked in. So that's going to be... Okay, so... AP expecting an AD mid then, potentially. So the good thing about having Graves and Gwen is that both of them can respectively flex between top lane and jungle. Sure, we're seeing more often Graves top and Gwen jungle, but we can't really discount some flexing still going on for PSU White. But we'll have to yep. see. Assuming this is going to be top lane first. Yep, Trindemir. We'll get the of course. Oh boy. It's still Love me some Trindemir gameplay. Yep. And now, Blue Side desperately needs an AP mid laner. Uh, yeah, you got yeah. a lot of AD stacking up there. The Trindemir, though, is still very scary. Uh, oh, that's yeah. That's duels just how deal with that is. one. Gwen may be able to get some damage in there. Graves as well. Uh, but you are not kiting this man, and All right. you want an AP. There's yeah. your Syndra. Yeah, and it's a really good game for Syndra because if you look at the enemy team, uh, Lee Sin, Jin, Trindemir, unless you're really scared of the chain CC of the Nautilus, you're not building Merc Treads this game, and everyone always praises Syndra into no Merc team comps because as single AP, you're all the AP damage, and if they itemize against you, well, uh, Jin and Trindemir will run you down. But, uh, that's an interesting last yeah, pick we there. Yeah, Poppy. It is... Only really helps I'm with a Trindemir. big uh, fan. Yeah, Trindemir Nautilus, Lee Sin, fairly situationally I'm powerful. I'm a big fan of Poppy into that, because you just stop all the engage from Lee Sin. You can stop the Nautilus hook, you stop the Trindemir trying to dash around. Navori Quickblade's giving his E up every two seconds. Yep. Very good. Should be perfectly stable in lane against Trindemir as well. Building very tanky, hard to kill. Uh, very hard to dive, especially if you're trying to get with, like, Lee so, Sin with dashes, so... Yeah, solid. This is Graves mid, then. Or unless Maybe it's... it's Poppy Jungle. It could be Poppy Jungle. You're right, you're right. It could be Gwen Jungle still, technically. As There's well. more flexing to be had in, uh, in this draft as it stands. It's probably... I forgot about, um... Gwen being locked in. It's more than likely Poppy Jungle. In that instance, which is, I don't think is as fantastic, but, hey, make it work. I mean, I think Poppy Jungle is pretty good because... If you counter gank the Lee Sin like that, then it's just like, well, where do you go? If you counter gank the Lee Sin, he can't easily get in onto wherever he's trying to go. So it definitely has some merit. And especially when Nautilus starts roaming around with the Lee Sin, oh, you just counter both of their engage with that part. But that all depends on who's going where, because we still don't know. It's Wheel and Chong, taking the Trindomir, it's going to be Duckwings on Poppy, so it is going to be Poppy Top, it is Gwen All right. Jungle! I was All right. not incorrect. Graves Mid. It is Graves Mid. Ah. Uh, so, so Graves Mid is a very fun and interactive mid lane for 
AP champions because nine times out of ten he'll just go fleet footwork. He will push in the mid wave because he's an auto attack champion. He doesn't really have to use spells. He'll like press Q as the minion funnel into a straight line, then auto attack, and then he just walks around in his grave, and you're stuck there as a mid lane mage, waiting to get your lost chapter and have mana sustain. Very true, and now just waiting for the rest of pick band to necessarily go out here. Definitely some interesting choices here for compositions. Again, it yeah. kind of feels like it's a lot of just throwing stuff together. I do like GBC putting together the Nautilus, like, Cinder kind of deal, where you have a lot of very potent engage in CC. Yeah. Between uh, Depth Charge as well as Dredge Line and Scatter the Weak. Make for a great combination. Jewel Axe on Lee Sin is going to be having so many options for kicks. Uh, Ezra's a little bit harder, but Chandra's is definitely vulnerable to Karma. You can kick in possibly the Graves uh, if you want to try to burst him down very quickly. Yeah, it's well, that all see. depends on if you have enough of the immediate damage to burst down the Graves. I mean, you got silent We've seen options. several you Graves build. Like, he could go Shield Bow and just be immune to that, or he can go Eclipse, and once you've kicked him into your team, and he'll just pop them with the Q ulti and auto attack. So, it's gonna be very dangerous to see how this, because if this Lee Sin can't really get going, then your entire engage, aside from a stray Syndra stun, is just completely ruined by the poppy in that top lane. Yep, depth charge still available. Nautilus makes that a little bit easier for yeah, them, but, but they got some if you're walking into melee range, trying to get into range as the Nautilus to press depth charge on a champion like an Ezreal or a Karma, I'm pretty sure the Ezreal Karma are playing it wrong. Yep, well, no shortage no. of mistakes we've seen here so far today. That is and fair. We'll probably see some more of this game, but we're going to take a quick break for Spectator to later run out, so be back on hey. stream in just a minute.
All right, we are loading on into game here in just a minute. Spectator delay has concluded. Exciting. Uh, skin check-in. Uh, ah, uh, Tramir's on base skin, Jin's on base skin, Nalson on base skin. It's a sad state of affairs. There's so many good Jin skins, too. Oh, there's so many. <laughs> Project's really great. Dark. Does say something when there's all of the good ones, and you're just like, I'll go base skin. I will base you know? skin. I mean, yeah. Faker can play his base skin, Ari, so I can't can play. There's well, no that's just Faker. Faker refuses to advertise League of Legends skins. Yep. Oh, we got a little bit Even... of a spectator bug with the uh, portraits I am. Yo! There's that one, it just happens sometimes where they're off center. Spectator is never good to us. There, there's Actually, always we were, something we were on a pretty breaking. Good streak today. We were on a pretty good streak yesterday, it was worse. Huh? Um, but. My, my bad, my bad. Because I'm captain this one. Yeah. I... <laughs> Either way, standard five points here for everybody. Nothing too fancy. Julax and. Oh, we all try to get in. Goes okay. to booster, not tabbed in. Alright, he takes a little bit more than a minute to respond there. Realistically, that doesn't really harm Megwen that much because you just recall after you stand there anyway. Oh, Duckling, so though, get healed. walking back in the kill box. There's the key. Crepping Pot gonna buy some time. But there's the ghost from Huyong. And Ducklings will have to force the flash out, so. That's a bit more unfortunate because Poppy might is probably get is recalling here to make sure the crafting potion stacks are back in time for lane, and Dranimir can probably play the wave to make it so Poppy might lose like one or two minions of EXP there, which would be quite unfortunate for the Poppy. Yep, delay that level two as much as possible. Yep. Wait, early prior mid going to no one's surprised. Braves. Yeah, you sweet no work, one's surprised. The auto attack sweet work graves into a mage. You just Q and then you auto the wave to stay healed, and it's like, wow, that mage has to use all their mana to yeah. match this. Good to note as well. It's going to be both jungler starting bot side, relatively slower path. It leads to going for Krug, so it's looking like a full clear for both of them. Up in the top lane. Yeah, it, it's a beat and... fest. It's a beat fest. Long oh. time we young, sorry. Yeah, that's one of the good things about oh, Poppy. Poppy, the crit. One more on, think will do it. First blood. Oh. And he lives, and he the lives Q healing. With the Q. Meanwhile, bot lane. Deadly Flurge checks out of shotters, but he has the root. Ah, oh. uh, Tavish can't get it. Veil. Aggressive arc that was... forward, but that's for good damage. She understood the burst was already out. That was so close on the Karma root, locking that Nautilus in place there. Yeah, but uh. Yeah, Trindamir does as Trindamir does with that little top lane <laughs> solo kill. Hits level 2 early, and unfortunately, Poppy, who starts Q level 1, can't really get the Trindamir off. And the crits yeah, come no through. No flash available, can't get away. Trindamir yeah. still has his. Luckily, Poppy did still have teleport, so is able to catch up in the EXP some, but. Yeah. I mean, this is the problem we saw with Penn State Blue in their series today, is that once that Trinomir gets moving, it is oh, so yeah. hard to stop it. As well, at least this time the jungler wasn't also top lane when you teleport back, so... True. Not a You don't teleport. just die again. Uh, however, good. the jungler's here now and goes to Booster. Yeah, they're here now. A little bit in trouble is... When? Dulux, getting away. Ooh, Who good stun me? onto the least sin by Duck Wings. Can they actually get the kill, though? Has a double up. Needs a little bit more damage. The scissors do not cut it. Duck wings, maybe a uh -oh. re-gauge. Don't do it, Lee Sin, don't do it. Very aggressive. Penn State also pulling up their mid laner. Universe on the way up. Actually, he's gonna go for Lee Sin in the jungle. Oh. oh. Oh, no, he's not. He thinks he's still under tower. Wait, no, he's just got a look at drop. They're going for the dive. Oh. And just gets through. Duck wings, meanwhile, bot lane, big fight. Veil very low. Flash Ooh. forward. The fourth kill shot. comes through with fourth shot plus ignite. And the Rift Guardian able to make that one happen. Also, Lee Sin killed the Poppy. Best, a one for one. Yep. Yeah, that's... The Karma? Oh! <laughs> oh! It doesn't matter. Heal's still available. Great dredge line for McTavish. We... We're at five kills at four minutes. Uh, yeah, and it is pretty much wild. all in early game. George Brown's favor here. Yeah. Cinder getting chased up in mid lane. Fortunately, Booster, without Not the really ulti, very hard to stick on people right now. 
Yeah. And we're just... Hopefully we'll see everybody recognize that. There's been a lot of blood, and now... That George Brown on the blue side is ahead. They can afford to, you know, take it a bit slower. Yeah, You've already... six k ahead. Got a decent gold lead for it being uh, five minutes, you know? So, you can afford to take things a bit slower, especially... That Jin has his tier 2 boots, which are Swifties even, so it makes him that much easier for to dodge out of all the pokes on the Karma Ezreal lane. Quit the fast boy. On the right side, Ducklings is advantage in XP right now because of the dive. Yeah. Puyong, uh, lost quite a bit there. Okay. Unfortunately, misses the second tap of the Q when it was already on the ground, but, uh... Yeah, that's sort of the thing that happens with top lane a lot of times. Sure, the enemy top laner does end up grabbing a kill, but EXP advantage is arguably more important in these early levels than killing Ooh, damage. Level 6 on Syndra, the outplay button is available. There, you don't, you don't kill the graves there. He's got the D shield, he has oh. fleet, he also has biscuits, which will... Yeah, he's scaling. He's going for <laughs> farming graves. I mean, Vinander, though, doesn't yeah. really want to let him do it for free. It's going to continue to apply the pressure. It's red line, good, buffer by Veil. Able to keep that one away. Karma. Karma W threatening the Nautilus if he stays in melee range a bit too much there. But, uh, first dragon going down at about oh, six this minutes. This like connects, though. RKJ still on cooldown. Deadly Flourish also connects. Rift Guardian needs one more hit. Beautiful yep. kill on Veil. Chandra's now left alone in the fourth shot. Not even going to need to be necessary as... Karma walks under the Luniverse. Still not level 6. The outplay button has been channeled and he's got to back away. I mean, that was the problem with the top side of Rome. Luniverse just down a ton of CS and XP to Quinado. I mean, Nato. Is yep. it Quinado or Quinado? Say... It's, sh it's Sharknado, so I'll say Quinado. I mean, yeah. Probably, you know, Tornado, Janna. That, that kind of thing along yeah, the line. Uh, top lane, though. Trinity Mirror in some trouble. Leon, Duck Wings. Oh, but Duck Wings is oh, taking a tower drop of three. Has the ulti, so. Okay, well, now, now there's no Trinity. Relax. But here oh. is Booster. The stun comes through the scissors. This time they do the damage. But the Lee Sin able to barely get away. One more auto attack would have done him in. Really good flash from Duck Wings. They're timing it so the Lee Sin still goes through, but the Poppy gets out of melee range before the Lee Sin can react. And just a bit more damage was needed for the Lee Sin to die there. Very and unlucky. it was also a really good ult channel to get the Trindamir out of there as well. Yep. So, you love to see I think it. I he went in a little bit too aggressively. I don't think, I'm not sure they had full knowledge of what Lisa was up to, but walking out of the chair, taking the free yeah. shot, not necessarily a great part of the plan. Still, works out for Penn State. I, lo right. I love the Poppy build. I love this War build. Mail is Look such at the Warden's mail. Very nice. Such a good item against Trindamir. Trindamir and you even. Trindamir Lee Sin. Top yeah. side? Oh, yeah, cool. that's a lovely time. Speaking of itemization, Graves is probably going to build Hex Drinker first item, which basically means Syndra's outplay button is more of just a regular play button. Yeah, would not be surprised if Merc Treads is an angle. I don't necessarily like it this game. Just cause, you know, I don't agree so with Merc Treads as an angle on Graves here. The magic is just not a problem. Good stun here by Ooh. Ducklings. Doing this one pretty heavily, but now Trinity makes this time to respond. Lethal tempo. Back. Yeah, Ducklings. Taking the butt end of that one on the backside. Get some shield though. Go on. Oh, needs Ooh. ulti, but Booster's here. Uh oh. He ult. Here's Trinamir. Gonna pop the W just for some extra resistance. The stun comes through. Oh, the flash away, but Duckings has the burn. And that'll be enough. All right. Take the kill. That was. It was looking like a pretty bad trade for Duckwings. Luckily, the Gwen was there to Ooh, help bot lane. Veil caught out again. These dredge lines do not miss. Next Havish. Never Securing another kill, unfortunately, goes on with the Ignite. But hey, you take those any of the week. The bot lane I, I know it's the thing in League of Legends about Nautilus hooks uh, being a bit egregious. But I mean, if you're constantly getting hit by them, it says a lot about the player. And this bot lane is slowly going from Ooh, bad to worse. Booster work. needs to be careful. Depends. Low HP against Julex. Just, just stand still. 
Save the ultimate. There you go. Okay, yeah. play it smart on the turn of air. Keep that out up with the Dragon Rage kick take, in. Take the Poppy into the shield. Get away. Booster coming back around now. They see a little bit. Flash forward from Lee, but now Booster is here, but Trick Mirror not very far behind. So even if Booster grabs this one, it's probably going to be a two for two. Syndra as well on the way up. As, oh, there's Buffer, but still Flash forward from McTavish. Oh. Grab this damage, but no, the shutdown on avail. Flash forward, Guardian grabs it now. One. With the curtains, Chandra's going to sit a little bit outside. This is awkward. That's just funny. This is awkward. <laughs> uh, and yeah. Chandra's not dead. That's... Oh, he's dead. <laughs> oh, no, not dead. <laughs> <laughs> Barely on six. Oh, Lord. He survives the grenade bounce. Go Booster did end up going down there to Huyong at the end of the tail end of that fight. Again, a little bit of weird pathing by Ducklings to go out topside. But... I'm not sure if he had too oh. many other options on that route. Eat the minion instead of the minion. Universe back canceled, backing in the middle of lane in front of Syndra. Very good. Of Gets stunned. Doesn't have ulti. If the, if Syndra had the outplay button, that was a free kill. Yes, it was. But presumably, use the outplay button on the Gwen to first no completed TP. item of the game on the Gwen. By the way, as the Nashers yep. too. For going. Wait, what is a mythic back? Is in in en behind enemy lines here. <laughs> Just look, I've seen him. Look, his, okay, okay, well, that one was a bit unlucky. Yep, posturing here for this Drake. I mean, yeah, if you get the first Drake at six minutes, you really want to put pressure on the team with Gwen, Ezreal, and Graves to be like, you guys are scaling relative to us. If we can... A little bit of a late W for Duckling, just gonna use it for the move speed out as yeah, Dragon set up. Get out. The currently going down. over George Brown is. But yeah. Grace pushing on mid. As the team with Leaf and Syndra and a bot lane this far ahead, you've already gotten the six minute drag. You wanna accelerate this and force PSU White to fight for Soul Point at something like gonna be, Oops. what, 20 something minutes Run, now? Lane, outplay button channel, Ludibus. Just absolutely fiending for the kill. Can't get it. The ult doesn't do enough damage. His booster kicks back. Gwen is not immune. Yeah. Not immune at all. And, and uh... kills mid for nothing in return. Yeah. Poppy might get that second plate. If her little hammer can auto-attack it fast enough. I feel like we were looking for a Riptail play there from uh, Booster, but a little preemptive. There was a very quick, uh, quick collapse. There was a lot of people in the mid lane. But, uh, right now we are at about 3,000 gold ahead for the blue team. And looking really good. Uh, yeah. I don't necessarily agree with Holebreaker Trindamir first item this game. I feel like for your team, when you already have these two dragons, you're obviously going to want the Trindamir here. For all of the fight, so buying Hole Breaker, it just makes you down. Very big combat item that could be Gale Force or even Kraken Slayer, if you want to. Which lets you get with your team and exert your Trindamir power in team fight. So, bit of a questionable first item. I know Hole Breaker is the hot myth nowadays. Very true. But, you can see its effect already, though. I mean, <laughs> significantly you're less damage the, being taken with some more damage. You're against the Poppy with Warden's Mail, Tab, Tabby, and the Bramble Vest. Ooh, it's like looking ground on Fuyong. He might have to burn all here, what? actually, if he stays too long. Like, what does Hole Breaker Trindamir expect to do in oh, this matchup? Oh, he's so low. Oh, the Q has to burn the Captain ult. America ain't has gonna to burn do the it. Very it nicely. looks like. Oh, I don't know that Mister Touch can get there in time. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe. Oh, it does cancel back, but it doesn't kill him. Oh, it's barely so close. enough. The back cancel is good, big enough as it is, though. See, that's what we call Trindamir ulti gives him full fury, so he luckily had enough to get the Q, and it did heal enough. Yep, relax. You just stay the way, but you you don't Jesus, win this, Poppy friends. Hurts. Sure, you have red smite, but Poppy's probably sitting at about hundred and something armor. If I'm being generous, then she just gets more the lower we she gets. We have the power. Yes, uh, 186. That's only going to get more as Poppy gets lower in HP, yep. so. <sighs> Jeez. Yep. That, 
Some hooks. That one barely missed on the Ezreal. On the bright yeah. side, Penn State starting to bring back the gold deficit a little bit. Bring it down to around the yep. 2k marker. So just get some farm, get some ability to come back into it. They're definitely not lacking on the scaling. Gwen, Raves, Ezreal. Even Karma late game with the uh, Mantra E is pretty effective. In two oh, fights. yeah. Poppy as well. You just run tech. them down. Yep. So, definitely not slocking for scaling on their own, right? Jin, Trinomir, of course, uh, not averse to playing out the longer games. Bloomers, uh, though, might have won the... Bingers have just been landing yeah. a lot of stuns, regardless of whether or not they've meant anything for lane phase as a whole, but that stun accuracy will prove very helpful in team fights around Dragons, which we've got about a minute's time on, so I'm hoping to see blue side sort of they can take this herald and then they can put it mid lane and be like do you want to lose the turret while we take soul point or are you gonna fight and then lose a bunch of mid lane yeah which i think is a very smart play here especially since especially since you have Jin rotating up as well like you're just daring penn state to run into the the dragon fight here Because there is going to be some time before it does spawn. Yep. And... Got about 41 seconds. Oh! Of Veil going for it. Ah. Guardian. So far, ah. so good. Gets hit by the oh. W. Now Veil gets hit by Deadly Flourish. And Jin has a minion wave. Can't get it! It's oh. a solo kill! Don't tread on me, says the Rift Guardian. I win these duels every day of the week. Mystic no Gale none. Force required. Yeah, Gale Force not required. That was... Bit aggro from Vale there, I'm willing to say. Only the Essence Reaver and probably a few long swords at that time. Can't really do much compared to a full mythic and level advantage gin. And that unfortunately loses Penn State a lot of ability to sort of play around this dragon. Yep. And uh, still not good. It doesn't look like a. I mean, they're not going for it on spawn, which yeah, say, George Brown is unfortunately kind of... is bad. Well, they are for going. Them. They are going to go for Luna versus the Dredge Lions too. Here comes Death Charge. Uh, gonna have to e flash yeah. away for just one ulti cooldown on a 60 second timer. As oh, Ooh. top lane, Duck Wings going in on. That was a good W. We young. Yeah, this is uh some emote spamming for yep another Q hit. As first turn goes down. This is exactly what I was saying. They took the Herald about a minute before Dragon. Like, you you can't fight us. It we are like Penn so State far wants ahead. To go, but yeah, Booster already when is not pretty immune? much dead. It is immune for a little bit, but not long enough. As but not enough. Nato gets away. Back to Avish, getting the peel on that one. Grabs another kill, ignite himself, and a beautiful scout of the week. Rift Guardian says, "I'll flash over the wall and take that one. Get the heck out of dodge." You have to run from the, the poppy. Forward. Yeah, take the kill for it. It just so happened that there was a grave there. And now, uh, yeah. 14 to uh, 4 in kills is... Whew. Now, everyone's, everyone's going to say it. Cloud Soul is not the most game-ending soul. You know? Nope, uh, not... for this team, it's pretty pretty poor. Uh, really only Trindamir and I mean... maybe Nautilus. Getting a lot of benefit from that. Yeah, not, not less point and click ulting and then running into the back line yep. of the enemy team. Yep. On his other little legs. Make it easy. But yeah, uh... Uh, top tower's gone. Hold Duck Wings is just kind of sitting here and letting it happen. <laughs> I mean, Can't it's do anything Hold about it. versus yeah. full tank poppy. Can't do anything about it, but I get it. <laughs> Fights there are if more like a, a bunch you, of handshakes. If you can't kill me, I'm gonna hit the tower. <laughs> yep. It's a good line of thought when you're playing trends, I have to admit. As Duckwing is going forward, has already used W, so... Maybe some options for Trinomir, but decides he gets it. Guardian, meanwhile, down here in the bot lane. Luniverse is going to try to dissuade him from one tap in the turret, but will do so anyway. And now with Tavish in the area. He doesn't want to overcommit too hard. Duckwing just... is very tanky. Nice little trade. It's very tanky. And... We're basically uh, in my favorite part of League of Legends, which is Soul Waiting Room. Soul We're gonna. Ooh, good W by Netflix. It's basically gonna be Blue Side being like, "We don't need to do anything. 
We can just sit here and wait. Yeah, we got Jin like, here. We got Jin, who's already absurdly fed. We do like, not mind going late on this. Sure, the enemy team is going to scale, but we are so far ahead that the scaling is still going to be relative, and we will still be stronger than them when they hit, like, say, a two-item power spike, which is what Penn State should be farming for right now. They need to get Ezreal onto Mana Mune, and then maybe, like, a really good component item. Graves did complete his call, so he can sell that for money. Poppy needs to get her Mythic. Gwen would really love to have Rift Maker by now. So, to set your timers for two minutes, because that's when the game is going to be broken open. Hmm. Yeah, they played here. Ludiverse and Veil vale definitely taking a little bit of backseat. Duck to the team when he can on the Poppy. And Booster really, besides the early topside plays, quite absent for most of this game. Hasn't really been able to get a fight of their choosing. Yeah. And that's I mean, that's kind of part of the course when you draft these kind of comps that have very little easy engage as you're kind of huh. at the whim and mercy of your own setup. And once you get behind and lose that control of the game, there is harder and harder. There is no engage aside from a poppy E into a wall. Yep. Or went out for a slow on to somebody. Oh, man. That's like those slows that, going to be we're, dangerous. We're being, we're being exaggerated when we call that engage, but that's the tools Penn State has available to them. Yeah. But yeah, we're just going to be waiting. Trindamir did pick up Gale Force. I feel like if you're going Hole Breaker, this game Kraken Slayer is the optimal one because it lets you, you know, actually kill this Poppy. Mm -hmm. And like, there's no point in Gale Force when you already have Hole Breaker because Hole Breaker is incentivizing the split push, whereas Gale Force helps you out a lot in team fights. But that's just arguing about build when you have about a 5,000 gold lead in the game, so realistically, it's not going to matter that much. <laughs> and if they did that like 30 seconds later, that would have been ideal, but they can do that and afford time to reset. Let Nautilus stock up on wards again and set up for soul point, which again, cloud soul, not the worst, but it puts Elder on the table perhaps a bit earlier than anybody would love to see in a League of Legends game. Yeah, the early soul, less so about the soul going over it for this, more so about the early Elder spawn. Mm -hmm. As it looks like PSU oh. is going to actually go for a oh, okay. This is actually quite an interesting move. Gwen has two items. But they understand what's going on, so they're going to go for it. As they're calling him out. Uh, yeah, getting hard called out by Trindamir. Teleport in for Elder. Duckwing's going to try to zone this Baron. Went on two items. Still half HP. Ludiverse is dead. Didn't really even need the ult. Duckwing does pop him away. Is McTavish. Trying to do what he can. Queen Nato, though. Here, good the red melee, line. Buffer by Bale, but deleted oh by the Sigma. Yep, now Dulax finally showing up. Lud Thank Booster, you for sorry, going very low. Duckwing's gonna try to peel off the enemy team, but there is another beautiful scat of the week. As Duckwing uh, is stressed low, Rip Guardian's here, Deadly Flourish doesn't connect, there's a lot Everyone of flashes! Everyone's flashing! <laughs> <laughs> it's you just gotta up keep them running, because Trindamir's just is ending immune. the game. Is immune. The tower's not immune, though. They will be able to get out of this one, but Meanwhile, Trindamir is taking the entirety of mid lane. This see, this game. is where this is where we need the picture and picture stuff that they use in LCS, because uh, Trindamir just sort of too. ran, and he hits him with the dabbing penguin for the DM, of course. Yeah, and uh, despite this not being the largest gold ditch point they've seen in this tournament, far from it, in fact. Uh, definitely making the most of it. Pushing pressure, Penn State tried to go for the Baron yeah. call, instead they get Soul and they dissuade the Baron. Uh, just don't do it fast enough, yeah. Ezreal is too far behind, Graves wasn't even there, he was farming mid lane. <laughs> it's just, you're not at the point it's in the game a bit of a rough that. one. And, uh, to put how, uh... Unideal, this is Prince State. They haven't gotten a single turret. Yeah, have not had a lot of pressure this game outside of top lane. 
when Ducklings was able to and do what he wanted against the Trinity. Turrets are really low, mind you, but I feel like getting those objective bounties is going to be a little, too little too late. And... Ooh, universe. Predated upon. Yeah. Trinimere. Scale Force. Yeah. Has ulti. There it is. Trinimere. There's a flash. Doesn't have the ghost, but yeah. we'll grab the kill. And yep, easy dive for the champion with an ulti that prevents him from doing so. Yeah, sounds about right. Uh, Booster finds uh, uh, some champions he does not want to see, and hey, you're not immune to an auto attack, my friend. You're, you're not immune, immune to, to melee range. Big scout of the week, and Queen Nato finishes it off. That was ultimate. a bit much. Oh, like ships in the night? Nope, Duckwing's nose. No, there's a Duckwing's ward. Nose. Finds him. Got the W down. Grabs the ulti for the knockup. The healing. Maybe it's enough. No! Big right. shutdown onto the poppy. Tindemir down. Finally gets his dude, Ducklings, takes down. Unfortunately. Leo. Yeah, they're uh, gonna take down inhibitor. <laughs> and up by Shawn's HP bar. Ooh. Every time the Nautilus sets those out, it's, it's like all those copy pops in the Reddit threads. I was just chilling in my kitchen, and then boom, a Nautilus hook hits me. Didn't even see it. You gotta be a bit worried. Because, uh, we have a two. Two to three minutes on the Elder Dragon, and that puts it at 28 minutes for an Elder, which is kind of scary. Because, unless Penn State get like a miracle poppy ult, and then Blue Side just funnels in one, one by one by one, it's very difficult to win a team fight from this point. Yeah, not too many options remaining here, and. We have Elder in just two minutes, twenty times. So that is the end game for this one, because I'm sure as soon as, as soon as George Brown can grab an Elder, they are more than willing to just put an end to this, to this yeah. one and go for game two. Been very just clean game all around. Sure, yeah, there's very been some few mechanical. mistakes on there, and very few. Been a lot of mechanical, mechanical outplays here and there, and that just sort of puts them ahead. Mm -hmm. And now, as they're again, just stalking in the jungle, waiting for anyone unsuspecting enough to enter. Yeah, no points are force. Enter into me, of something. course. We can't forget him. Yeah, he's doing what Trippy does best, taking the entire enemy yeah, jungle yeah. instantly. As Veil, vale. uh oh, a little bit outside of oh, turn no. range, and there is the curtain the call. And Veil, vale. it is general. curtains for you, Chandra's monster ease, but there's no escape. Not as good as Bon Bon, but close enough. Yep, now Chandra's caught out on the wrong side. I think Duckling's trying to retreat to defend these turrets. They might not even need Elder I mean, to end the game. there's no turrets left. Yeah, Elder not necessary. It's, it's just it. Penn State, they put up a fight, that's to be sure, but there just isn't anything it's, they can do at massacre. this point. It's a massacre. 21 uh, to 5 with a 9k gold lead. They're looking for Ludiverse to put the nail in the coffin, but they'll just take the Nexus instead. George Brown, game one handedly in their favor. Yeah. They're going to go up to match point. Oh boy. And yeah, that was basically, I'll, I'll call it clinical. It was just sort of very good play and communication all around. And they sort of just snowballed there. Yeah, very and controlled game. Very controlled game plan. Obviously, there was a lot of good mechanical plays, especially from the bot lane, that sort of helped them get even further ahead than they were originally and it just sort of snowballed from arguably the six minute dragon they got with their bot lane pressure i feel because uh when you start stacking dragons that early it puts a lot of pressure on the team who doesn't have the dragons quite so and with this one uh well to see what adaptations they penn state tries to make in game Number two, because right now, George Brown College looking very comfortable on their rolls. So, we're back here in just a few minutes for that second game. And we got, excuse me, we got George Brown College up 1-0 to zero on match point.
All right, hello again. Welcome back to George Brown College versus Penn State White. Currently, George Brown College up 1-0 to zero in this quarterfinals. Best of three on to match point. So we get ready to jump into game two draft. And with that... Same sides course, as the last yep, game. Same so size I'm, Take it away, sir. I'm predicting the same bands. Uh, well, we or can certainly see currently... Close enough to the same bands. Yep. Pretty darn similar from what we saw last game. Substituting the Twisted Fate band from Penn State in the first game for the Nautilus, though respecting the bot lane definitely a bit more as first pick Lee Sin yet again. Definitely, like we said in the last game, not the most common blue side first pick, but definitely nice and solid playmaking champion that yep. realistically you can sort of slot into whatever team comp you want to play because you always love a good insect or two yep. throughout Jolex, a game. Jolex of all looking very proficient on the champion. Uh, made some good plays. All right. the... Oh, up! Oh, uh, get Graves again, again. Flexible pick. Preferably yeah. maybe not seeing it mid again. That didn't look like it went well, too well. I mean, realistically, the the Graves and Syndra lane basically had a whole lot of nothing happen. So I mean, not the worst thing that could have happened, but not ideal. But the Karma pick up yet again. Yep, Chandra's so... back on Karma. Karma itself didn't look too bad last game. Uh, Nautilus definitely had yeah. a lot of pressure in the lane, but that is the uh, the essence of the dredge line. <laughs> Not something that can be taken for granted. As now, George Brown can respond with their own. Right. This time, electing go the Moon Affilios. Man. Yep, Moon Man is on the rift. We uh, don't really see a lot of Affilios as of late in pro play. Sort of. The Affilios Lulu, maybe? That, that angle sort of phased out. Thresh, maybe. Aphelios Thresh, very good. Offers Aphelios a lot of safety thanks to yep. Lantern. Will be the this time. And, alright. Pretty tried and true Moon Man and Soul Man right there. Yep. Now Penn State likely going to walk away there, AD Carry, seeing the Aphelios face up. There are a lot of AD Carry options. Yep. Only Jinx Ash, is open. Caitlin, Jin is oh, open. God, Jinx. Jinx and Jin both open for a pick here would be your two biggest meta ones. Of course, Kai's still available. Would not want to play that in Ophelia's stuff, I don't think. That'd uh, be a little bit yeah. of one. So, yep, and we'll it's... just go for the Jinx. Well, get excited, guys. We're going to watch some... Hopefully, we get to the late game in this one. <laughs> yeah, some, some really strong AD Nice little threats. late game late game Jinx. Get a get a killer assist and then just steamroll over a team fight. Yep. There's the Trinity and, Band. Not gonna deal with that one all right, again. Expected. Sort of taking out what I consider the two champions that sort of snowballed the game for George Brown in game one in the Nautilus and the Trindamir. Interesting that Penn State's banning on red side if the Trindamir is that strong of an option. I'm surprised they're not considering it for Ducklings or for Ludiverse. Who can't be played mid. Also the Fiora ban from George Brown on the blue side. Yep, taking that Targeting away from Duckwings. Solo lane. Yeah, this is probably going to be top pinch if they both want to opt into it. Uh, mid lane, keep that pretty open. I mean, you have options for mages. Instead, and Penn State could have been Gwen. Man. Interesting. Very yeah. interesting. Probably not really sure what the Gwen man is because you are on red side and blue side can't really flex a Gwen pick on 4 and 5 unless they pick two champions that could go... Well, you have the Lee Sin anyway, so Gwen says to me they have a very specific top laner they want to pick here, and Gwen, just, Gwen and Trindamir both really do counter that, but that's Echo. <laughs> Again, questions, because Echo can go jungle or it can go mid. It is yep. probably going to end up mid lane. I would assume it's a mid lane pick. Uh, Luniverse does play quite a bit of Echo, or at least used to. Yeah. Back in the fall. It was definitely one of his uh, more but played champions. And, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Love me some spicy mid lanes. And Cassiopeia yep. is low range champion. And low range and echo for Miasma worth as well as Graze. Some targets. And I'm fairly certain if Echo is in the Miasma, he can't he ult eat. out. He cannot, he cannot ult. 
His ult's technically a dash. Very... I'm a big fan of this mid lane matchup. Oh, and we get the boss. All right, George Brown. Like you know what? I see here. No, yeah. After that game one, why not go off the wall with your four and five pick? I'm a big fan of these solo laners from George Brown. Cassio is, unfortunately, if the game goes super late, will get outranged by the Jinx with the karma on their side, but if they just stomp the game, there is no late game. Yep, and Mordecai is looking for Duck Wings. Solid option here into both, into the set, so. I think it's a very good idea because you can ult a problem champion out of the team fight. Yeah, and then if you, Mordecai does end up getting the Zanis, it's not so much about killing the dude you bring in to the Shadow Realm, it's about keeping them in the Shadow Realm for as long as possible. Quite so, as we get into game draft. Gotta get at least everything sorted out, you know, cross your T's, dot your eyes, all that lovely stuff. Yeah. But yeah, definitely, I mean, again, George Brown, a very balanced composition they got going here in terms of options. Cassiopeia can side lane, uh, considering yeah. she actually can deal in late game a pretty good Oh, yeah, she, she can deal with a lot, a lot of damage. And damage. Can deal with Mordekaiser specifically, even in death. Yeah, Rock. her kiting, once she gets a few items under her belt and a bunch of levels because of her passive, it's going to be very good against Mordekaiser, whose skill shots and abilities are very slow. Yep. And if he can't get his passive off, he's just sort of going to sit there as Cassiopeia uh, QEs circles around him as it were. Yeah, and said as well, also someone that can go in the side lane if necessary, definitely can hold his own against a lot of champions. Uh, Echo being definitely one of them. Haymaker can nullify a lot of incoming damage from burst oh, yeah. champions. And then again, George Brown, these same picks can all group up, all still do with the team fight. You've at least it for playmaking. Thresh, while less engaged than, was significantly less engaged than Nautilus, uh, for ease of access, you really only have that death sentence, which is kind of, it's definitely not a dredge line. It doesn't get you in there as hard and you have to really hard commit to the engage if you do. Uh, it's not going to bring the enemy to you at all. But still something to be said there. Set, of course, can come in, uh, especially if he has some mobility. I don't think chem tank set is a thing anymore, but... I really don't think Anyone is ever in melee range of him, he will be able to get a face breaker off and just pound it uh, afterwards with Q plus Haymaker. Again, setting up for Cassiopeia. You have good kite back with Thresh and Cast Miasma, so anyone trying to get right. in from Penn State, which is really just going to be Echo and Graves at this point, because no one else has get in there. Like Again, there's no hook champ, there's no solid engage option. It's not like you're packing a Malphite in there or an Orn who can kind of kick off fights in the top lane. Oh, so, so hear me out. It's kind of the same same basic game plans from both of these teams going into game two. This might be a ghost bet game. It's not going to happen, but it would be really good because it lets them be able to just run into the enemy team. And if he gets tanky enough, he can just sit there and disrupt the backline. He can take the Jinx far away from the team fight. He can ult someone like the Mordekaiser into the team and then get the big uh, hay or whatever his E is called into the Haymaker and then let Aphelios and Cassiopeia AoE the team to death. It's probably not going to be Ghost set, but I'm, I'm just a big fan of Ghost in general in games where you don't really need the teleport. Because, like, again, with Ghost, it lets you sort of circumvent not having a Turbo Chem Tank anymore. You run into the fight, and you can just punch people as that. Yep. We'll see how he plays it here. Coming up soon, Spectator Delay is hit, and that means we're going to take our little intermission. So, for you all a lot sitting at home, sit back, have fun, enjoy the music.
All right, and we are hopping into the loading screen. Thank you guys for the spectator delay. Uh, as we get ready to load on in the game. In just a second. Ooh, I we, actually we, have not seen the new Pentakill Mordekaiser skin. This will be fun. We've upgraded. They're only the bot lane from George. <laughs> yep. No skins. I forgot Cassie P has a COVID skin now, too. Huh. Some interesting skins. Yeah, a lot, a lot before. of the cool mid lane champions just have Coven skins now. Good, it's a good skin line. Yeah. As we load on into game two, George Brown College up one to zero. Gonna be looking to seal it out here and give themselves a ticket to the semifinals next weekend. As we kick this one off, looking like it'll be a five point start for Penn State White as they take to the rift and some amalgamation of searching for enemy champions for the side of it George It is Brown. gonna be Double teleports on <clears throat> both sides, so nothing crazy like Tryndamere with Ghost or like Camille's tend to not take and take like teleport ignite and stuff like that. No, nope. teleport flash for everybody in the solo lanes. Yep, try to play the map, try to keep uh get some lane pressure in the early game. And Ludiverse gonna get tagged up here. Another big rune traces conqueror on. Cassio. Yep. Normally, when you take Conquer on Cassio, you're basically saying, I can and will kite you with the innate move speed I have from landing my Q and my passive. I don't need phase rush to reposition, so I'm just gonna kite around you and then get Conqueror prompt and then just win. It's it's a very confident rune for Cassio players. Yep. And oh, against... Duckwings? Yeah, he's found himself a set, although... Oh, he started Q, so he yeah. gets a great trade out of that. Like, if he started yeah. E, this is a little lopsided because afterwards Mordekaiser will be able to win with the passive, but with Q start, that is a different story, you sir. You just punch him. Yeah, Young once again, coming out swinging in top lane. Yeah, but now luckily, one of the good things that Mordekaiser has a pretty decent farming ability from range in the Q to where he doesn't feel too bad about losing, and he can also heal up from last inning with the Doran's Ring. Because it gives him health instead of mana, because he has no mana. <laughs> True. Fun fact. Neither top laner needs mana at this moment. And... So it's just a battle of health, and unfortunately, Set tends to win those because of his inbuilt health regen on passes. Yeah, especially with the Doran's but, I mean, Ring, Duckwing has to kill hit. minions. So. If he keeps getting hit by isolated Mordekaiser Qs, then true, uh, very true, might be a bit worse for wear. Those, those isolated Mordekaiser Qs do tend to do tend to leave their marks. Uh, Definitely. No two ticks for both these. Duckwing's gonna spend the W point. That was a really good W actually, because he uses it as the other set empowered auto comes in, and he basically takes no extended damage from that, because then he can pop the heal and be all good. Okay, Duckwing. Pops his. Oh, not good sidestep. Nice. Yeah, Duckwing's playing this pretty well. Good sidestep from the set as well to dodge out on the E. Because he probably would have been solo under turret range there and then taken a turret shot. Nato definitely building up the pressure here in mid lane. Oh, yeah. That's sort of what happens with Cassio into melee champions. You can just sort of be like... No, you're not going to be able to touch the wave unless you extend your mana. And for Echo, it's not as bad because his Q is really good at killing minions, but still a bit Back rough. Mactavish and Rift Guardian going to take the fight here, but Booster is in the area on the nice. graves. Yep, Mactavish has the flash. Will be able to get out of this one. Yep, no problem. He's getting out of the flash defensively, so that's one summoner spell burn from the gank. Two, actually. Rift Guardian also flashed. So all good right. gank there by Booster. Burn some summoner spells to see if he wants to revisit that one at all. Yeah, good call. Just sort of full clearing from top to bot and then walking down bot lane. Low risk, no low risk gank. You're not losing anything for it. It's not expensive. Low risk, anytime. but you got a high reward. Yep, very nicely done. Another isolated Q. I'd say certainly Definitely. coming out of the early game a little bit better, I think, than last time. Yeah. Uh, still down There's a, a bit of a high CS gold, differential in the solo lanes, but that's all attributed to matchup and biases towards that. Especially in the mid lane, where, like I said, Cassiopeia just dares melee champions to try to CS, lest they just end up losing all of their health. 
Yep, is running a little bit low on mana, so I just have to be a little careful about how this one plays well, out as sustain starts to become an issue. The good thing about that is that Cafeo last hits with E. Yep, there's still it, some mana. It's a full refund of the mana that the E costs, and also there's always presence of mind. So the more auto attacks you can end up putting onto the Echo, you don't care about the damage, you care about the passive mana regen you get from presence of mind when you damage an enemy champion. Yep. So, whenever Tornado there can auto attack the Echo, they will, and just do trades like that. It helps your keep your mana regen up. It deals damage to the Echo, who also doesn't have any potions left. So, forcing the Echo to recall. Max Tavish getting rooted up here, but Gulak once There's again here thing. first. But Max Tavish needs the heal. Grabs it from Rift Guardian, as the Gravitum is out. Doesn't have the root. So can't necessarily uh, lock anyone down as Booster also here. Relax. Runs into the grave. Near sighted. Green. Can't dash away just yet. Rift Guardian trying to tie it away. Does sidestep away from the Rift Guardian shocker, but Got first blood to the goes the booster. That fight goes a whole lot differently if the hero blue side caster minion doesn't stand in front of the zap from Vale, because Thresh was at a very low HP. Yep, uh, and then Jinx to get a reset there, and then Doesn't just start can. running. Ah, he duckling's about that. He baits out. Yeah, he goes, you stopped my back, man, but you lost cannon and two minions. We win. We yeah. take these wins. And luckily, that kill going on is Ooh. 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 Good, a uh, little good sidestep on that, or not sidestep, but like backstep. Ooh, but top lane all is in. Ducklings, one HP. Whoa, just needs to hit it. Can't do it. Has to flash. And a flash. As Julex knows where Booster uh, is, but can he get the kill? Yes, he can. The E connects. Tempest. And yet, two kills out of pretty much nowhere from... I'm not sure how yeah. that top lane instance kind of happened. Where Duckwings got so low so fast. Might have somehow gotten eased by the set. I, that's but, my yeah. only guess. And, now and I don't know how Booster ended up that low in the jungle. But, yeah. uh... I think he tried to, he uh, might have tried to solo dragon. Time. He might have tried to solo dragon. Uh... Well, it's about seven minutes, and it is first dragon once oh, again. Oh, taking a lot of damage. Good pull into turret range. Yep. But I mean, Xiong going to be totally fine again. It that is set. has the his old HP regen, so it's not going to stick. It is set. It's still. It's still. He might not be as broken as he was on release, but he's he's still the boss. He has the same. He is same still gimmicks. the boss. That is his moniker in League of Legends. That is true. <laughs> it's very succinct, you know? That's a duckling that tries up a pseudo freeze here in the top lane. Not sure if the main had enough health to get that to work, but hey. Might as well but yeah, uh, uh, Rift Guardian, though. Possibly in trouble here. Chandra just goes in. Has good guns for the fight, the so maybe they come out of this. Chakra getting healing. Veil ticking very low. The minions! The Ignite just the barely don't kill him as Rift Guardian needs to get onto Chandra's, but the speed buff from. E might get him away. McTavish, hook, death sentence, too short. Splash four from Dulux, though. That will land. And it took a little bit more expenditure than they might have wanted, but the kill is a kill, and that's more gold in the pockets of the Lee Singer. So those in auto or blue buff, like, please help me. Tank the Q for me so I can get out. Fortunately, that's too much. But Penn State will take the first Rift Hail. Can't really... Offer any contest with the top lane pushing in, and Castiel might be able to stop. And on the bright uh, side for that as well, Vale did live that one somehow <laughs> on very low yeah. HP. So that is a, that is like a consolation prize for Penn State Something. there. As Graves also had tried to throw up his Herald, but yeah, got it. Grabs right Herald on time. Young. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't. yeah, yeah, he doesn't have the flash up. He can't. He was looking for a ward, I think, or vision from cast to get ult. Mm -hmm. But that was about as far as he was gonna get. And that herald, we'll have to see where they decide to put it. But there aren't a lot of good lanes for them to put it with this. both solo lanes being. Ooh, top lane, Duckling's back on tower, but he's not taking too much damage. Finally, grabs some aggro as we own. Has the Q. Not fast enough. Duckwing's gonna try to kite this one away. Waiting, waiting. Duckwing's coming has back e, off cooldown. Duckwing, there's him. the E, but Duckwing's E is Ooh. too far away, and that's another solo kill topside. 
Uh, yeah, the boss uh, makes it work. What can we say? Sees Man. the angle to ult Mordekaiser right under the turret and takes it. As set, you always go for those. Because, like, you end up under your turret if the enemy runs away and burns summoners. You're like, great, I can just do that again next time. Fortunate that it results in a kill. Quite As... so, indeed. And Vale relegated to uh, farming with the Zapper. Zap farming. Yep, Zap farming. The, uh, Unfortunately, this is an ARAM. That's not ideal. Very true. Luniverse can take some damage here from yeah. Queenado. That, that's sort of what happens with as Cassio into Echo. Like, Echo tries to do something. Oh. If you land one Q, you land the rest oh, of them. Oh, bot side. They don't oh, know that Great is here. Booster going in immediately on Moctavish. And now Guardian. They don't know that Ellie good was there. Has a second Q, but oh the choppers my. stop. The Rift Guard able to grab an auto attack. The Booster is going to secure him as well. The Herald probably going to be popped. Bot side. Penn State playing around this bot lane very well here. In the second game, Vale just barely goes down. The choppers oh. were in a good position as... We're in the oh, Shadow Realm in the top lane. But can he do anything with it? It's taking a long time to get his passive up, so this will be a very negligible fight. Ducklings might even lose it on the back half. Good E. Ducklings has the Q, and that one more shut down. Very nicely done, sir. And the Herald's still not popping your bot lane. Booster low on mana. Needs to be a little bit careful. Does get um, that sentence in. Can take a few tower shot. There is a Jinx here. Rocket thrown. Oh, yep. We'll say that. Really good solo kill from Duckwing. Sort of, again, like all the solo kills in top lane, out of nowhere. You know, what? once you're in that Shadow Realm, Mordekaiser does steal a lot of your stats. And he can sort of walk at you and be like, uh, you're, 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 you're stuck here with me. Luckily, it wasn't the other way around. So... Now, unfortunately for Penn State's bot lane, for how these trades have been going in their favor so far, a lot of that's ended up going on to Booster. So yeah. He needs to get some love back, and currently lane ganking them again, because he's just, yeah, just forcing the He has to play. get rid of the Herald somehow. Yep. I and don't like, mind it. They do have to be careful, though, because Cassie up here is on the move. Back to Avish. Misses the hook. It's not as wide as an Autos hitbox. Rift Guardian, looking for it, has oh, the double root. Him. There's the Lee Sin, the exhaust. It's not going to be a big, petrifying gaze to the ground. And everyone from Penn State falls. It's a triple kill That's for the it. George Brown mid laner. And Queen Nato shows up and causes one hell of a storm. So I was going to silently mention how the Casio has over 10 CS per minute and has an objective bounty or has a bounty just from CS thing. And I was gonna be like, you know, that's pretty good. Your Casio is just scaling, and then the snake gets a triple kill and uh, and a shutdown on that top of that. Scale. Scaling to super scaling. It's a triple kill with a shutdown on the graves. That's big. That is a lot of money in the be in the bank of snakes for Cassio. Yep. Here's what mythic they're gonna go. They go Everfrost, but they they upgrade the Seraph, so I'm legally not allowed to be mad about the Everfrost buy here. Yep, Everfrost is perfectly fine to their team. Everfrost is broken. Every mid laner is going it. When you build a lost chapter item nine times out of ten, it makes me sad, but that's neither here nor there. See, this is this is the benefit of being gold is you don't have to care about what's optimal. You just build what's oh. fun. So I build Ludens because I like going fast. No, see, Ludens, Ludens is good on, but that's not Cassio. Not, not Cassio. <laughs> yeah, don't build Ludens on Cassio. No, sometimes, sometimes it can be good if you're doing two maps, which was meta. Oh wow! You past. know that that was a a time before times. Uh, before Guardian. we had all these. Actually, a bit of a tricky angles. position here with the tower this low, but doing a pretty good bit of damage, especially with Vale taking the turn shot for free. Yeah. And now I feel like if that Carmen lands, they might try to like zap ult from no, the jank. I was expecting. But... You know, just annoying Luniverse. I mean, that's just been the story of the lane phase for mid lane, really. It's like, what is this poor little melee range Echo supposed to do here? He has to walk up to get farm, all of his HP gets sunk. Yeah, but as we go into side the dragon count, pretty even game. About a thousand gold lead here for GBC as they've been playing this pretty well overall. Pensei playing on their bot side to some 
beneficial to Grio. It might not look it on the yeah. score line, but the Graves has been the sole beneficiary of that. As yeah, Queenado found an back. echo. That's a root. That's a stun. And the ground is enough. Queenado grabs a rampage and now, with the solo kill. And, and now oh, Graves is unfortunately yeah. also dead. Oh, the kick is actually a little bit close to the wall, but oh, it doesn't matter. That's so much damage. Booster and Queenado. Uh, that's what we call mid jungle synergy right there. Wow. As, uh. Hey. Do you, do you like him? Because, uh. Penn State sure doesn't. No. This Cassio is. I, Cassio's not normally the raid boss. That's normally reserved for, you know, moves oh. and stuff. But Duckwing just got to make that. Uh, his Moon over Man here. And the Shadow Rain. Guardian uh, does not want to be here. Anymore, he is going to attempt to get away as quickly as possible. He uses his ult, and everything, and might actually survive. The set is here, and he's got uh, Ducklings out right. of the way. Luniverse, though, from the backside, finally takes a visit to bot lane and pays back his dues. Veil vale grabs Squeeong, and that's going to be All right. quick kills for Penn State. That's something. Penn State is getting something off of that. Unfortunately, it's probably not going to be first perk. His mid lane is already really low, and Cassio is already there. But yep. they'll at least get Jinx something. They'll they're giving Jinx an echo Please. something there, which yep. is very Lee important. Lee also got a second herald. Yeah, so that is that is a note. It was traded cross map. Cassiopeia and Lee Sin not there. Cassio is just lurking. I mean, and it's like she's someone got is going to face up. Someone is going to die. Someone and it is looks going like to face it's, it looks like it's going to be booster. <laughs> I oh, know she. Never mind. She's doing they rap. decided to just take the she, take she wishes, the jungle camp. She wishes for birds. Feeling chicken tonight. Yeah. C <laughs> Cigar smoke just it, isn't her isn't her vibe right now. Doesn't, doesn't it, need it's, it's, smoke it's like those images of sna of snakes' bodies having the <laughs> having like the full animal inside. It's just Cassiopeia and but they. Yeah, and the anaconda and stuff. like alligators. Yeah. Yeah. And. uh... Point being, the snake is very scary. Yeah. For everybody on Penn State right now. That is... Duckwing... I'll give it a timer. If you can survive... It's it's like a ring challenge. Can you survive so long in the ring against this one one dude? Uh, it's like, who can survive when with consistent DPS gets Zanyas, more than five seconds? <laughs> when Mordecai gets Zanyas, that's at least a few seconds of Cassiopeia not shredding your entire team. In, so... I feel like you should be trying to do something like that. Unfortunately, the great thing about Cassiopeia is that, fun fact, snakes can't wear boots. This is true. So, she also just bought a full hourglass. So, uh... Oh, you know, coming forward here. Booster trying to ward away with some smoke screen. Good damage from Karma. Now, an important thing about Cassiopeia is that her twin fangs does not heal her unless Ooh. someone is already poisoned. Hold on here, Ludiverse is lurking in the backside here, trying to wait for someone to dive. It's Duckling's big e pull on the Mac Tavish. Here comes the ultimate. Echo got a stun in the back line, not able to grab anything just yet as Echo gets kicked back in. Ludiverse finally uses the ultimate. Jill Echo so low, but the Graves ult does so much damage, and the Petrifying Gaze won't do crap this time. Duckling secures himself the triple. Penn State, a clean ace at 18 minutes. And the even game has turned into an advantage. 2K is the goal lead in Penn State. They work their way back in with an excellently played team fight. Duckwing's just uh, top deck Exodia in that one. Sends the whole team into the Shadow Realm. Just sort of standing on top of everybody. So picks much someone AOE out damage. and left. Duckwing hits a three man obliterate. Booster hits a five man all. Luniverse has a giant slow stun. Veil gets a huge Veil is Chandra's playing team. Jinx. Yeah, it's you know? not Mantra. All or sorry, Mantra Q, it's just so much AoE and everyone was stacked Very, up. very big. And the shutdown on the Cassio went down. I didn't quite catch who it went to. But uh, that's pretty big. That was a full 700 gold bounty. And the gold speaks for itself. Yeah, it it's won hard. immediately into Penn State's favor. Yep. Young, looking for Ducklings. I'm not sure if he wins this one, because the longer this game goes on, Ducklings wins this more and more. The Rift Maker. Yeah. Now, interestingly enough, as I was going to say before the massive dragon fight with Cassiopeia, she doesn't have to buy boots, so she can afford to go with six items. Oop, Ducklings trying to outplay here, uh, but that might be one member too many as the ult comes through. Still alive somehow. Karma shield. 700 gold. 
Oh, shut down. Good lord. Yeah. On a jewel axe. And but the anyways. beast is slain. Yeah. So, about Cassiopeia. Six full item slots, no boots required. Most people would put a six damage item in there, but... Realistically, QSF is the best item for Cassio to get at some point, because... If... He gets put into the Shadow Realm against Mordekaiser. That's a good majority of your damage in team fight gone. And if you can QSS, you can just make this Mordekaiser not relevant. And it it narrows down the pool of useful champions Mordekaiser can put it in the Shadow Realm. Because in the last fight, he ulted the Thresh, which is like, wow, you ulted Thresh. Now, Set has the QSS, which is very good, because it means Set no longer a target, so that narrows the pool for the Mordekaiser in these team fights. So, his target selection is going to be very, very important in the future team fights that we're, we are inevitably going to see. As everything returns to some nice, nice peace and quiet. Yep, gold kind of swings back the other way, shut down, helping. Close that 2k gap a little bit as Jolax finds booster. Maybe not want to take that now. The Grave does have the shield bow. A little bit tankier than he might seem. He got a lot of healing. to make up for some effective HP. Jolax can't see the lantern. Tornado coming up. They're more confident to look for a pick. A little bit early positioning for Dragon. We're just trying to secure vision in bot side river. Maybe now, I'm going to say... What everybody's thinking. Chandris has the Oblivion Orb in inventory. It's going to be Chemtech Future Fire. And if we take a look on the enemy team, healing, we have healing, Gore Drinker healing, Set. Healing. We have Gore Drinker Lee Sin. We have Cassiopeia with Conqueror. And we have an Aphelios who can get Red Gun in team fights. It is probably one of the best drives in the game for this Karma to pick, especially with the Jinx. Yep, incredibly efficient as Kuyung might need to actually back off here as uh, Bale and Chandra take a visit up into the topside jungle. That's another turret. turret. So all outer turrets are down yep. for the blue side, which offers Penn State some movement around the map. Very it is true. even in turrets with the only thing separating both teams is about 2,000 gold and one dragon. In yep. favor of blue. Ocean Dragon also coming up here. Penn State takes their last resets. It looks like George Brown going to be a little bit late on theirs. Maybe just going to look to seed this one over. But Dragon spawning in 40 seconds. I mean, yeah, what happened last time they had to check in? So. The second Dragon. Sure, it puts them on full point. But I feel like especially after that last Dragon fight where they were so far ahead. And they just lost it due to great play from Penn State. It's a reality check, you know? It's sort of like, do we really need to fight this? And the answer realistically is no, but they might attempt, like, a Lee Sin steal anyway, because Lee Sin is very mobile and can get out of things relatively freely, especially yeah, with like a fresh lantern. For it. They got everyone down here, so they need to group up a little bit more with Set potentially. And I, again, this is Pet State doing, doing the job very well. If they don't have a lot of engagement on their composition, they need people to check into them, and that's exactly what they're doing yeah. here in this early dragon, I've... I think. It's stolen away though with the lantern preposition Julak. Uh, what a play! That was clean. I was going to say ideal play for George Brown here is just I mean, let Lee Sin a, do... a little aggressive. Duck wings. He flashed over now the petrifying gate. Big damage. Quinado gonna pop the zonia try to get out, but there's the choppers are firm. Quinado somehow oh my fails. God. Just goes to can't get the ulti off. How is this possible? Vale doing so much damage to the AoE rockets. The Thresh is just the end piece, and now Penn State a window to uh, go for the angle? But double TPs are up. Quinado can reset and get back on map. That if is they want to true. Jewel Axe. Penn State health. need to start this, bait the teleports, and then get out. Yes, this is an absolute bait the teleport angle, but they might just be able to do it. Jinx makes it so fast with Mordekaiser. Oh, man. Young in the area, 2600 American. Can Julax do it twice? He can't do no, it he again. Can't do it. It's already secured, and now at least it's stuck in the pit. War hops over, but Cal well, Lucky's Ake's booster is coming up. Teleport uh, in from Cassiopeia. Penn State trying to disengage. It looks like they will do so successfully. Back's coming through, and yeah, 
Teleport wasted on the reset. And Penn State grab the Baron. That's a 4k gold lead to their side. They continue to look to Penn fight back State. in this series. Penn State got really mad. That leaf in stole that dragon. That's what I'll say. Duckwind just immediately sees the Cassio in ult range I and mean, it's just like no. Massive misplay from Queen Nato for even being in that like that area. Yeah. Just way too You far only off. want to do that when you have QSS available because then you can just like you just laugh at the Mordekaiser who walks up to you and ults you and then you kite back towards your See, team. The bigger problem There's the no team in the Shadow Realm. It's just you. It's not even the big deal with the team in the Shadow Realm, it's the part where you come out of the Shadow Realm and the entire enemy team is there. Yeah. You're already low from fighting Mordekaiser one-on-one, -on -one, giving him all that AP. Never. And you gotta... I mean, that's just a way too... Now, now it becomes what can Penn State manage to do with this Baron. It, pretty slow coming off the reset, which is very reasonable, because there is still a very high DPS Cassiopeia waiting in the wings, so... Never they are playing the 1-3-1 one, one relatively well, keeping... They're three very powerful. Yep, and on the bright side, it and is so point for, for George Brown. The good thing about the 1-3-1 one, three, one, three, one for this game is that you get to have your Karma, and she has 280 carries to buff up. Whereas your two Silence are like, yeah, like Karma's cool, but we don't really need her to succeed. Whereas Graves and Jinx, they love having a Karma behind them. Can't find on the Thresh, so Mitchell is down. Now That's one turret. Excited Jinx. And yeah, the Thresh really not working out this game for the engage cat for It's just not it's yeah. not the same uh, level as we only trying to do his best here. But Duckwing, this matchup is getting better and better for Mordekaiser. Duck He's got a lot of HP to his name. Lots I won't say that he much. He does so much damage. A Juggernaut. Rift Maker. Riftmaker paying dividends here. Yep, too young. Looking for an ulti. Does he cancel the Death Realm actually? Still losing though in the trade overall. Yeah. This is the nature yeah, of the Yeah, probably he's gonna force Set to have to back off and that's turret number two from the Baron buff. Yeah, Set no anti-heal means that that matchup is really bad. But... And... Gonna have to play the Cassiopeia, not that effective as we continue onward. 7k, 6k of the gold lead. Who's getting 6 and 7k? And it, it, it's fluctuating, yep. you know. GBC trying to make their way back in this game any way they can again. Dragon Stack is still there in the favor of 56 the next Drake, and they have not been doing he too could, hot on these team Lee fights. Sin could steal it again. It could happen again. Uh, we can't discount that. Never falter. Quite true, though. I can't imagine uh, Boots now, can be too Penn late State, on his smites the second time around. Penn State can probably mark him a bit better, and maybe even if Mordekaiser ult comes up, which it doesn't really seem like it will, they just Mordekaiser ult the least and as he comes in, and then he can't smite the dragon. Because that's, in pro play especially, that's one of the main reasons we see Mordekaiser work in these big objective fights because you can just say oh you want to try to smite steel no it's no longer a 50 50. but it looks like Ooh. uh back tavish caught out casper and flash so it looks like they did a good job of chasing george brown out of the bot side area and letting veil solo the dragon who is on three items right now compared to aphelios's two and a couple swords and I mean, Queen Ada just cannot approach this Jinx without some help. Yeah, that's the thing. If this Cassio got ahead really early, and then it was just that one fight, and now Jinx, Jinx Karma will always outrange you in team fights, and unless you get like the godlike flash, petrifying gaze, this Jinx is just going to be free firing. And if People haven't watched enough pro play. When Jinx free fires, Jinx wins. So it's gonna come down to whether or not Cassio can get in range to even do good ulti or not. Yep. Gold lead is gonna keep growing here. As again, Penn State. 
grabbing whatever they can off this map. Gonna keep up the pressure. And, and for now, not much to use. Baron up in about 30 seconds or so. Don't really predict any teams are gonna try to do any Baron baits. We're not gonna be dancing around the big purple worm today. At least I don't foresee it. Very surprised that we don't see any. We don't see Cassiopeia going Shadow Flame in this game with a uh, Lee Sin Mordekaiser or Karma. If there's ever a game, I know it's an overbuilt item in general, but if there's ever a game to go Shadow Flame, I feel like it must be this one. Shield bow and graves. I feel like the thing about Shadow Flame is that like it all depends on who Cassiopeia thinks they're going to be able to hit, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, it does get good mileage against Mordekaiser, but he. Realistically, he's only just now building magic with this, and it's only just a little null magic. Yeah, we're going in a lot of trouble here. Did use the QSS to get out of the death realm, but uh. I mean, he just hard loses this now. This is not a close. Can we get an HP check on Mordekaiser? Because it looks like a lot. It's effectively a lot. 3,100 to. If I can click. Stop the other tower, please. 2,700. So about 400 HP. It difference. looks a lot more when he pops his shield. Pop shield, and then, you know, has a crap set of healing. It's a state and all this other stuff. Uh, uh, this is the trouble. weirdest flank position. Down, oh my, the jinx ever. damage is huge. We need a kick. Can anything done? Veil's unstoppable. You cannot walk out grouped up against the jinx, my friend. Dulac goes Triple. down. Triple? Fion goes for a no. hero play, but it's far too late. And I think that that's is GG. That's a, that's a bit of a jinx, Sam. You give her one, you give her an inch, she takes the mile. Yep. And that is going to be Pensing mopping up this one. Wasn't necessarily Are you ready for a game world, three? Yeah, for the first time on cast this weekend, we're going to game three, ladies and gentlemen. Winner takes all as we head to our final game of this quarterfinal series. All right. Very good comeback from Penn State. Definitely off the back of that big dragon fight, which ideally you don't want to have all of your, you know, wins be off of getting a v one very good dragon fight. But still, a win is a win, hey, as you take they say. Those. Long as the Nexus falls, it falls. Alrighty. With that, though, we're going to take a quick break on intermission. For cast and we'll be back here in just a few so catch you back on the rift in just a few minutes
All right, welcome back for game three. We got a little bit of a banger here. Penn State White versus George Brown College, the final we game. We do a little best of three-ing. Yeah, it, it, well, now it's just a best of one for the seat in the semifinals, you know. <laughs> Got to go the whole way, and we're already into game three draft. Here Penn State on blue side yep. this time. Yep, switch the sides. We're going to see something new. GBC perhaps. has elected to go red side for the third game. They want that counter pick. Yep, and um, so far, bands very similar. We're betting Thresh this time for Penn State, so really didn't like the Thresh pick. Uh, trying to get that one out of the way. Caitlin banned away. Nautilus banned away as they well. They just don't like Hook Champion. Yeah, it seems to be uh, the Achilles heel of the Penn State bot lane. Well, yeah, getting getting a hook to the heel would would really hurt. You know? <laughs> but yeah, uh, and the Hecarim ban. Hecarim has just... Sort of started crawling up Kinda the jungle Kind of interesting we see it on blue side band away, though, unless F we have here. something. I'm curious whether they're thinking of picking B1 over or something like that, Hecarim. Yeah. Uh, uh, they're going to B1 did... the Lee Sin this time. Of course. That, that's been the this trend Lee for, Sin, for I can feel for LS. Series. I can feel LS losing his hairline right now. Oh, no. <laughs> From us B1ing Lee Sin <laughs> three games in a row. But, but come on, it fits into every comp. <laughs> Copium. Cop copium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least in, it's still a good champion yeah, if it's... you are good at just outskilling the enemy. It's been showing up which... in every single game. Looks pretty darn good. Even last yeah. game, which was an L for GBC. Still a solid pick. Had plenty of impact in the early game. Jin, give me the lock in for them. And AD Jin. Yep, so... going back to the Jin. Didn't elect to go with Thelios last game. Uh, definitely had a much harder time. And okay. Jin, Leo, Jin okay. engaged before it. Yep, there You'll we go. You'll have to see it. Now, Penn State can go with Morgana here if they want to go with that angle into Leona. Uh, it's one of the I options feel that, like, like generally just never, you can do. Morgana angle just because no one, like, has... Morgana has barely, like, if at all, been played ever. So unless it's a big comfort pick, yeah. then I highly... Morgana's I always the first one you come to mind. We think, hmm, what doesn't let Leona... Stun me for seven continuous seconds. Yeah, okay. Uh, jumping okay. over a wall farther than Talon can. That's how you get out of Leona stun. Zary. Mark's ready. Yep. Hope you're ready to hear that one a lot. Uh, Zary <laughs> surprisingly just basically went through both game one and game two, pick and ban all the way through. But, uh. Zary Lulu. Zary Lulu. Okay. Got an enchantment. That name right sounds right. like it can be a champion in of itself. You know, four syllables, perfect little name. But uh, we've seen Zary and oh, Yumi together. Okay. And Lulu is just, you know, yep. Yumi, but the support player has to play the game. Trindamira locked away way. here. I'd be curious if they looked at something like the Jax ban, which is one of the more classic Trindamira And there we do have the Fiora ban. Uh, Malphite, is, Malphite is another one that you could work with in lane. If teams play Malphite, I will clap. Malphite, not You already terrible. have Jin and Trindamir. Malphite is so good into this. Yep, Penn State like, said, banning Diana, gonna try to pinch the jungle pool. What is Jin going to do to a Malphite, you know? Answer's not right. usually much. Uh, unless Jin is very if, fed, in which if case only, he does Jin things. If only people see the correct Malphite angles. GPC, one Draft more ban here. I'm hoping they, yeah, Silas is fine. And then Zin gonna be the last ban. So Penn State going with the jungle pool target. GPC top and mid lane taken out. Duck Wings has been known to pull out the Silas from time to time, so not a terrible call out there. Yeah. And now probably going to take. I would have to assume this is your jungle pick. There's no point in blinding a mid laner when you see jungle face up. Unless you're really saving something, you want to try to see if you can like bait out a you're pick. Saving something. And no, they're too. gonna blind Oriana. Not bad, but definitely counterable. Okay, Echo, Oriana still is available. historically one of the most blindable mid laners in basically for the past forever of pro play and organized play at that matter. Pretty plug and play, I'll call it. You can always you always love to see a, a big multi man shockwave and especially with a champion like Leona. Yeah, I say Echo's and, the easy answer here. This is a fantastic Echo lane. Yeah. Does has so much priority and... in the game and Poppy, yeah. We saw this in game one. It didn't look bad in lane. 
after the level one I play. mean, it, it was fine. It's just that the entire game sort of collapsed yeah. around the poppy. I was say, mid lane's a good so, setup right now for Penn State White. I'm surprised. In a vacuum, Ooh. pretty good. Oh my, mm. excuse me, uh -huh. sir. That is... They, they knew. They knew. Let me, let me just... Let me just grab my my Talia my Talia splash art frame that I have right here to let you guys know how excited I am to see a Talia in this game. <laughs> I don't know if excitement uh, is the right word, because when was the last time we've seen a Talia win a game? Ah, uh, last time I've played it on my own. But uh, no, Talia in the jungle, it's been nerfed a lot because Riot Games wants Talia to be a mid laner where they could easily change that, but that's neither here nor there. Talia is relatively decent at her clear speed, especially since you are on red side. You get to start blue buff with a leash and you love to see it. It takes a lot of good positioning for the first little clear to make sure that your worked ground is not gonna impede you. It so ideally you want to start a bit south of the blue buff and then move your work ground up and then to the right to do gromp and then you move it up to do wolves and then you hit level three and your AoE is very good on Talia once you get the W and the E in the jungle. And it can very easily basically match the clear of Lee Sin if they both decide to go down opposite side if they both decide to clear upwards because Lee Sin starting bot lane it's realistically a lot of the AoE camps that he's gonna struggle dealing whereas Talia in the first levels is really good at single target and then is also really good at the AoE camps so gonna be very good I don't aside from like that I don't really see how well it can fit into the team say, my I thing mean, is Talia just makes it doesn't feel like it works with the rest of the team I mean it doesn't work into the enemy team because no it definitely doesn't work into the enemy team despite her E being anti-dash it does like no damage because like Lee Sin and Echo are going to build a lot of HP Lee Sin probably I going to go Echo's second proc E is also a blink not a dash well, yeah, but the first one, and then Zeri, if Zeri is ending up dashing over Talia E, then Zeri is in the wrong range of an enemy team, and also she builds, is probably going to build Bruiser anyway, so it won't do damage. It's sort of, like, weird? Like, in the early game, yeah, it'll sort of, like, disincentivize Lee Sang from trying to go too crazy on them, but... I mean, you already have very good AP damage from the Orianna, and the enemy team wasn't going to be building stuff like Merc Tread. Someone might go like Anathema, put it on Orianna, and they might get one magic resist item. But now you're just incentivizing them to be able to actually buy the Merc Tread, especially with the Leona on the team. The fact that you're doubling down on the magic damage in... Your only AD damage sources are Trindamir, which by all means is still really good. And then Jin, who can't really consistently deal physical damage in big team fights. It's gonna be a rough road, it's gonna be a rocky road, haha, for Talia to do something this game unless they get off to a really early snowball. I'll say, GBC is in a very piecemeal I really composition. I like Talia. <laughs> you just like Talia, so you're biased as heck. I main Oriana, I still think it's kind of weird here. Look, I, I can like the Talia, but also discuss about how it really doesn't fit the team, but we can talk about that more once we're in game. Yep, we're going to head over to Spectator Delay. We'll have to see how it's played out once we get there. I'll ruminate on this. Yep, you you do that, my friend. Uh, till then, going to head out for just a little bit. and Stay tuned for when we hop out onto, uh, onto the Rift.
All right, we're loading in the game. So uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how much stock we're willing to put into OP GG searching, but I did want to look very at little with the accounts state. that are being used. <laughs> That's fair, but also I just wanted to check very because Tal Talia is one of the champions where it's not really ideal to break them out unless you're like really confident in them. And Julex has played a bit of Talia in past the last season and this one, so it's not so much that they just really didn't have other options. That they, they felt like Talia is the right decision in this comp. And we of course always have the benefit of being casters, so we can say a lot, but if the players think it's good then Level one from George yeah. Brown here. Bale. He's gonna spot it out and take it. He's gonna respond that, in kind to probably top side. That's a pretty good thing about Zeri is that like even if Vale didn't, you know, see that immediately, there's so always the thing of like Zeri's Q can just be used to face check. Like, sure, if you face check into that team you die anyway, but like a lot of times teams just like wait until the last possible minute. Jalaxon. All right. So we are gaming. Be careful here. Zeri is coming up on the back side. Booster, though. Problems of his own. He's on the wrong side of town. Yeah, problems of his own here. Takes a little bit too long. Deadly Flirt does connect. Ooh. There's the flash. And that's first blood for GBC. Uh, Jalaxon kind of did a, did a bit of trolling there by flashing forward and not even getting anything. But, uh... Didn't need to really hit confirm that Oof. one. That's a bit of an oof in the business. Hey, that is a kill onto Tryndamere, my friend. That is uh, I've seen, the I've worst seen this, possible outcome. I've seen this one in the movies. <laughs> I, I think I know how I've it ends. I've seen this one in the picture films. Yeah. I, I know what happened. Oh. This is the tension. I love <laughs> the legend. Which results in literally nothing as Duckwing takes 1E and then walks away. Hey, he hit him with the Q and then the Very Captain good. America. Ah, oh, I love League level 1 where there's no CC. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. Yeah, we each uh, hit each other once and walk away. Oh, and Orianna going to take a terrible two. trade here. This, this is Duckwing's pain. got the shield, which is very good. Because one of the big things about Trindamir is... Oh, well, yeah, I mean, he is level he 2, level, level one. 1. This is the same thing we saw in game 1. We, we, <laughs> I've seen this one before, Jeez. too. Huh, this is familiar. Duckwing's not gonna play it nearly as aggressively as he did last time. Just gonna understand. He, like, he ah. remembers. He's also seen that one in, in the movies. I understand how this matchup works now. But yeah, one of the big things about Trindamir is not so much him immediately jumping on you. It's if you decide to try to like jump in and fight on him, it's the return trade. Yeah, he can over he can extend quite a bit after he's few attacks, he can recharge his E back up. Yeah. Quite sticky in those extended fights. It's a bit rough for people going up against Mr. Trindamir there. And mid lane, but, this might uh, be the first time we've seen Kunedo in a pretty rough matchup overall. Winning the early game, of course, because yeah. Oriana versus Melee, but as soon as this Echo starts getting some some levels, this is a very hard lane to play because you have kill pressure and wave clear on the side of uh, Luniverse. One of the big things is that Echo is forced to reset early because did use both of his potions early while Oriana still has. A potion and a biscuit. Yep. So, we only actually just lead. forced the TP out a bit early, probably a bit earlier than Luniverse would want. Only able to get a dark seal and then another potion, which is still good by all means. It's just probably not what you want to see. As uh, goes to be sure gonna get a good bit of damage on Queenado, who's probably gonna have to take her reset. I mean, they they were realistically going to reset. Yeah, after I just that have to anyway TP when now, they probably. see the Echo teleport in. So. Yeah. Duckwing is young. Do we get Ghost go. popped? He wants this kill, but the stun is there. Duckwing should be able to walk this one out. It's only level four. Yeah. Yeah. Trindamir, you can't be taking that one. Yep. Heal really up good and... play by Duckwing. So like holding on to that E, being like, come on, come on, get come close on. to the give wall. Me, give me the wall. Give me the wall. Yeah. And Ariana gets tier and boots, which nice. is very good. Boots are very, very important in this Ariana and Echo matchup because. It makes it so it's that much harder for Echo to just walk up to you for free without you being able to kite back a bit and deal a lot of damage with your spells as he leaves with his speed boost passive. Very true. 
Kalia doing some counter jungling as like, Good use of the E to get the shield there. Gonna mitigate some of the damage on Ludiverse. But, uh, trouble, level 5 has the W, so he's gonna get a pretty fat shield from this, but there's Jalax throwing oh, the Q the, the wrong there's way. There's just the Talia there. Talia's going the wrong way, but the kill is still there with the auto attacks. I mean, Talia had already launched the Q. Yeah. It's just that. <laughs> That's a good kill mid lane. A oh, wild Talia appears. And Echo really didn't have any water types on his side there. Ooh, Julex and McTavish need to be a little careful here on this dragon. They do have vision, but the bot side is free. No. Yeah. Very W through the wall. And Rift Guardian, yep, not much. He has Fleet Footwork. He, He's fine. He's got it's Fleet Footwork. He's fine. got three potions. Yep. He's just vibing. So far, no. the game going well. About a 1.3k gold lead for GBC thus far. Not necessarily as explosive as their last one once they got moving, but getting CS leads where it counts. Mid lane, small CS lead, and then top lane at a top lane, fairly good one. Yep. Should be should actually come down here after some of these minions are clear. This is a wave pushing in. So. Yeah. Not that big of a level wave. Level 6 trying to be a level 5 duck wings. Right but I've seen this one is, before. I don't think he has the HP right now. Poppy is still yeah, pretty no with that double, that double cloth armor is pretty intimidating. And there's also the shield from Poppy as well is one of the yep. big things. Damage just fishing around here with the Zenith Blade. Chandra's. Ooh. Ooh. Final grenade damage is a lot once you stack a few minion kills on it. It really does. Yeah. Sucker hurts. Yeah, one of the good things about Trindamir into Poppy is... Like, we were talking about Trindamir sort of like... The king of trading into you as you're running away, well... Poppy can get the shield, and it sort of lowers the the potency of Trinomir trading into you as you walk away. Also, I mean, we do. I didn't even look at the room. We do. We do have airy Oriana. This is not a. Oh, tried to sidestep the Q. Good, Good class. Good, flash. Good yep. ward hop. Does burn the ultimate. Good plays all around. Yeah. Very nicely done. That was a very good flash. That was kind of a weird look. But yeah. It covered, but... Airy on Oriana is pretty decent like you realistically no, want to use it to like try to get a little bit of prio in the first few levels before echo just scales very well sort of, like, wise as well really do that so, like, in this game i feel like phase rush is relatively decent because you can use it to get away from champions like the least and the bit faster. like the echo just to kind of yeah. try to semi tight that is fail I've, I've seen this one before oh this isn't good this isn't good AoE yes, Dragons, Rift Guardian trying to heal away as McDavid buying some time. Bale can't aim the auto attacks. We're as not playing Valor. Yep. Unfortunately, his Ducklings. Yeah, this is still looking pretty good for Poppy. Dulac trying to grab his buff. Does have to smite to do something. Universe wants to go for the kill on um, it. It's 4v3, though. Not something they necessarily want to fight. Oriana went for a base in this whole process, so they will get nothing else. Not going to go for the drop as. Uh, Okay, Hyung pops the ulti, and Duckwing just says, Hey, you can go the other way, my nice friend. Nice ult. Uh, you can go think about what you've done over at your turret. And now Dragon started up by Pet State White. We're back. Gulax looking for it, but Ludiverse off angle. on the flank. There's the parallel converted. Not going to land Good. despite Good the up. through for booster. I'm... Now Oriana has Shockwave. Doesn't choose to use it just yet. Or no, just doesn't have Shockwave. It's still well, off. Cool Bail. Nope, kick it over. The gun. Jin finds it. Estalia with really? ulti, looking for shotters, but in I 2v1, the exhaust is down and Booster is here. Julax, ah, oh, the overextension, but Leona coming up. Booster kick, dash away just yet. Zenith Slate is there as well. That's as what I like to see. Guardian. No fear. <laughs> yeah, I know the entire ba enemy bailed, team. Bailed out by the Leona Jin combo. Whew. Still no kills a kill, and despite the dragon going away at Penn State, still going to push that goal. Still pretty further. good. Turn to mirror, needs to be a little careful. He does not have all. Yeah, just gonna get stunned to the wall and grounded. Oh, this is a disaster for and a Trish player. And needs the to get the e off. Thank you, just a few more autos. One more Fion. second. Oh, the Captain America. The grass for solo kill. <laughs> ah, top lane tank solo killing someone. What intricate mechanical outplay. Hey, hey, look. Look, we take it after the months and months of Trindamir we've seen. And... <laughs> Very true. What's about to do my solo queue game? Pop Poppy had to slam him into the wall a few times for that, you know? Yep, very true. That's a big kill. Of course, has the Warden's Mail. <laughs> Classic Warden's Savant Mail. Savant over here. A little bit less great when you have Talia juggle, because you're not getting the double value for it. But hey, still very, very good in lane. Yeah. And you get plates for it. Trinamir, of course, no teleport. Uh, speaking of Talia. Talia is here. 
Duckwing's not having the ult yet. He does have flash though, so should be perfectly fine with this. Relax needs to hit. Yep. Doesn't. Just misses everything. Unfortunate. But you weren't killing the poppy there anyway. Yeah, that was... <laughs> Ooh, Ludiverse actually is going to look for Talia in the jungle, so this is really dangerous. Okay. Yep. Zulax yet has no idea. And now should understand that he is in grave danger, but it doesn't matter. Not even going to be able to fight the buff. Captain America. Yep. The Trooper. Uh, mid <laughs> That's a bit unfortunate. They saw Talia, and Poppy's like, yo, Talia's probably walking back to her topside jungle. Let, let's deal with that. Yep. Push and uh, they dealt with it. As now Queen Ido, I'm not sure what he's doing up here. Good, Ooh. good shockwave, good command distance to buy some space for Booster and Luniverse. Both have a lot of mobility as well as the bot lane now coming up. Tries to that Booster though, low, grabs the kill. That was, so that was that's from uh, my mind assist. telling me no. This is but Queen Ido now with double buffs. Grip Guardian trying to kite this one out. Fail, walking up, yep, there's the wild Bart's growth. ready. Luniverse, like it turned up, but oh, you're walking right into the Echo Shade. No, no, that's not the name. That's not the look Queen Ado at all. Chandra's up now as well. And as then Leon, top, lane. top lane. Lee Young trying to duel yet again. McTavish in trouble. Bale pushing forward. Chandra grabs the kill. And back everyone and else forth. gets out. Back okay. and forth. Queen Ado, the... Oh, the misplay of standing on the Echo Shade. You had that kill in the bag. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's not looking where your feet are sitting. That's what... See, that, that's the thing. You... Importantly, if you trip like that once, you're likely never to trip like that again. So, just a bit of a misplay on that side. But, uh, it's even. This game is even at this point, which is pretty big. We haven't really seen an even game state this early yeah, in this the is other two. Dangerous. This is very, it's only a few hundred gold in difference. A lot of this game is picked up by Vale when he comes back to lane. Uh, as Duckwing's booster and Chandris grabbing this first Herald. A little late. Take this Herald. 12 minutes. Only got about mean... two to pop it somewhere. Probably just going to go mid or top and grab some quick plate and gold as it's picked up by booster. Probably ideal. Or probably we can put it mid lane and force Oriana to not be safe. Yep. As Duckwing's gets level advantage. We got the whole breaker. Yep, it's back to the middle as Booster in. Good ground by Duckwings now. So, I, I don't think anything else happens here. We young, trying to get away. The ghost not being up, but the and jump back under. Sure, guys definitely trying to get away. Good things. ulti by We young, but Booster defends his top laner. Duckwings not punished for that one. Yeah. Okay, that would have. Now that looks a bit be, dangerous probably there. Be top, probably gonna be held top into a dive. Still with the uh, I mean, Tinder is probably just gonna be like, "Yo, they might herald and dive me," so he's just gonna back yep, all the way out. Guardian walking up on Veil vale here, some damage down. Good, we got a stun into the cleanse. That's gonna deal. Lightning the storm. Oh, the flash out of the slow by the exhaust is down. Drift Guardian can't really do much else. Veil vale gonna burst down Mac and then. Don't walk to the minions. Yes, the static here passing. Oh, but oh, just can't grab. Uh, the root comes through. Maybe you look for the kill there. Now it's the curtain call, but Chandra's one. full HP. Oh, but here but comes there's the, the wall. Backside. Can the kill come through? Yes, it can. Oh. One more shot with the curtain call. Chandra's all by their lonesome. And that's another kill. All right. That's a, good, that's a good call, back, call out for the Tilia there, being able to get the wall. And then somehow Rift Guardian Matrix is that... Uh, Gen 4 ulti Ooh, shot. It's amazing how much Hallbreaker makes it an item difference. <laughs> it's just like, I take well, less damage now. Bit of an early W you know, there, yeah, but to... Shinmir doesn't have ulti, so I don't yeah, think he should be looking to die here. Possible Dragon Storm again. This didn't end that well last time for GBC in this game when they tried to start at first trick. Ended up getting pushed off and all the way back I mean, to the side, but now they have. They do have Queen Auto here from the beginning. Yeah, so and Jin is forward. here. He does have a mythic. Relax, looking for it. Good! Good size mythic. Immediately mix forces up. out the ultimate All right. time winder used. Really good size mythic up there, sort of predicting you know, where go Ludiverse proxy was going to walk. Duck wings. <laughs> you know, Trindamir. <laughs> it's, it's Trindamir. It's the, it's the Trindamir deck. Veil now checking up. Has Trinity Force completed. Very strong on the Zeri. 
Dragon going low. It looks like Penn State White content to get this one. Oh no, Booster looking. 900, 700, stolen away. What are you doing, Jewel Axe? It's right there. Oh man, they didn't a have smite. Break. He like doesn't have smite. That's the thing. Oh no. They they burned the they fourth shot a bit first. too early, and they can't really deep yet it down that well because without the gin, it's sort of like well. No one peels the lease in off. It's and then Talia used up all her work ground in and around the dragon pit, so there's not a lot of damage left. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, no one decided to be like, yo, leaf in. Might try to do a leaf in moment. Might try to do it. We did literally last game. Literally less than. But you know, luckily, all right, down. Leaf in wasted its flash there. Yeah, Tweyo does damage now. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting there. He's got a hull raker, a pickaxe, and some boots. He's got lethal tempo, you know. Bale That's is sort of like 50 in the daggers the worth of attack speed. Very fun. It's... Young going on duck wings. W's down. Then grab a few more objects. Not doing any damage at all. Now the good it's thing not about Poppy Q not is that it sails oh, with Young. the target. Stunned, locked down, but the W's gonna expire before her yeah. leaf can get there. Not really the good matter. thing about Poppy Q when Trinimir goes Soul Break is that Poppy Q scales with the enemy's max HP, so it's oh. technically doing more damage. Oh to no, Sui Young is dead. Oh, uh, out early. He has the Q. Not sure why he goes back for the funny fruits. He has no need to be careful. Ludibert is here. That's a parallel version that doesn't bite anyone. Oh my barely god. Through the upright. As Julax on the back side, oh, no. immediately turns on his squishy maids. Good flash away for now, but Ghost Booster comes in through, and that's going to be an easy oh, kill for the Lee close. Sin. Looking for the flank, but didn't realize the rest of the team was on the retreat. And that's a punish by Penn State White. Ooh. Vale looking for I mean, back to I Tavis, say if uh, that deadly flurs land would do anything, but Lulu very. I mean, come on. Yeah. Hito, John. Uh, gonna be taking a lot of damage. Luniverse, yeah, this matchup does not go well for Orion the longer this game goes. He starts to get one shot at some point. You have Force Away. I am like to have the proc as Bactavia. They're just diving it. The Wild Grogs can keep Veil vale perfectly healthy. His Rift Guardian going lower and lower. The turret! Andres. There he can auto attack. Oh, Fiong getting dove again. Oh, it's the back off. Got to get that, but. Oh, uh, not Force again, Shot. dude. Oh, okay. the miss. Chandra's good flash away. Just to make sure that one's confirmed. If there was any very other careful, champion. but here comes Talia, Julax, and Vale. Oh, it's just the E blocking the shots on Walked the Guardians. Into the, <laughs> walked into the threaded valley. Oh, Julax needs to be valley. careful here. The Echo is spotted. Guinato seeing that one come out. Maybe he was looking for a cleanup dive onto Jin there if it was unguarded. And Krugtax. Trindamir doing Trindamir thing. Krug tax. Of course. If you will pick Trindamir, you will pay the Krug tax. And still, Jung jungler, even gold. jungler, not here, mine. Even gold going into 18 minutes as Queen Ada gonna really stop good, really the first. Really <laughs> Oh, good shockwave. She's gonna press the R button. Does manage to get out of the Echo ult again. Yeah. So pretty and with good. that, there's a lot more drooping up mid. Lunaver's in a little bit more dice than Queen Ada. Chandra's not gonna get tagged by Talia in there, and that's gonna be fine. And Lunaver's just gonna have to deal with. Incoming damage, good shield after all the damage comes through there. <laughs> Did also burn the Guardian. Yep, and that's so that the Echo cool force to reset Herald up for the grab. It is second Herald, not the most important. Duck Wings. W to move away. Young. Trying to get on. Oh, Relax everyone. And Mac here. Davis are here, but Duck Wings only sent one away. Oh, oh no! It's a dash cancel of the century. Duck Wings still the last flash. Solar Flare used. Doesn't take the sun. There's the knock back Five in. This is taking a hot. Ducklings almost got the kill on Julax. No, he's barely gonna miss it. That was a 3v1 and almost the Bobby comes out with a kill. What a survivability for Ducklings. Mike, so Amazing much time what can can't do. be there. That's a beautiful Ooh. flash kick, and the Oriana is dead to rights. 301. Can't Goal even shockwave because he got polymorphed. Yep, you oh. cannot bush check as Ori into Lee, man. You are going to get kicked. Meanwhile, though, Hallbreaker in its full effect. Hallbreaker. Hallbreaker. <laughs> We're not going to it's just Hallbreaker. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's not even Trindamir anymore. Oh, uh, you need to be careful here. Ludiverse does have the Time Winder available. It takes a lot of damage, though, as 
Oh, we oh. slid. That is not where you want to be for not for how you ended up here, but uh, that's a little unfortunate. Veil, try to get some hits on Mac to. I mean. Ludiverse looking for Wong, who does not have ulti, already used it, but can't get the crits. Ooh, uses the oh. time winder. Game, that was the game wasn't of gonna chicken risk, right there. Yeah, wasn't going to risk it. I respect Luniverse for just, hey, I'm going to take the time winder because if I die here, Trin has full reign topside during this dragon fight, and I'm not there. Because Luniverse that, that still has That was the TP. game of chicken there. Because it's like, if you don't ult, you yeah. die. Luniverse and then still has TP up. for this dragon fight. So he can back yeah. and go right here and try to get a kill onto Dulax or Mactava. Ducklings is so unbelievably tanky. He can just walk up here as Mactavish. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the movie here, Leona, but Parallel Convention comes through Duckling's meanwhile on the back line. He gets stunned up. Actually, he's taking every load. Done. Wild Grove's done. Zary's doing your job, but wow! Right into the hands of Trindamir! Ludiverse on the back line. Like, oh, Leona, surviving so long. The stun is there. Ludiverse try to cut away. Can't get killed. No! Bop. Dulax finds it with a double kill. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Vale, I think that's... we get a little bit too early. Duckling's not able to actually get on the back line without Booster there. It just becomes such a hard fight. And this time, with Smite, still not available. Early. <laughs> Jewel Axe is going to get the dragon. There we go. And with the uh, back and forth game, we finally have a substantial lead in favor of GBC after that one. Very well played fight to kind of back from the poppy to survive long enough to deal with Zeri. Very fortunate yeah, that Sui Young was coming down that way. As that's sort of the thing about... Careful. Booster, not able to hit... Sonic Wave. Yeah, the Poppy's got a lot of armor, but both Talia and Oriana have Ludin's Echo, which has the magic pen path yep. for the mythic item. And Talia's also got Sword Shoes. And it's interesting like so, we see uh, one... grouping right now, because he is just sitting with the team with a Hallbreaker in his inventory. So that's a lot of wasted stats, but hey, who am I to judge? They're looking for picks on Ashandra's and Bale. Can't stuff. find the Zenith Blade. Just can't find not. the W. I can't find the I Talia. think throwing the seismic shove towards the Lulu there is always the better play. Yeah. Because you're never hitting very way of the skill shot. Leon does already. not care about any of his damage. The Fendemir is just going to hit the turret. Oh, Duckwing's here though. Max Tavis needs to be careful. Rift Guardian, maybe a little too close. Veil. There it goes. Relax, he has pick back, it's on the Ducklings though, so they don't want to overcommit just yet. Trinomir uses the W, grabs a few slows. He is doing damage, not a lot in of it. In SSO, this is just damage. a lot of posturing. This is just a lot of looking for an opportunity, looking for an area it's to actually It's a game of chicken. Whoever, whoever messes up their small rotations first, the other team will call them out on Absolutely. It, what's going on here. Both teams position correctly, no one ends up dying for it. Just gonna back away and continue to farm. Trinomir gonna go up top lane, grab this CM pushed it by Luniverse, who's not at the previous engagement. Trindomir. Hmm? Trindomir gaming. Yes, Trindomir gaming. Side lane we go. Me side lane, me push tower. Me side lane, me pushed. <laughs> but yeah, uh... Oh, Lunivers. Ooh, saw, didn't see Leona at first. <laughs> was like, like, I no, got this gin. This gin is mine. There's only a gin here? That's crazy. Uh, free and then... kill. Goes over wall, Leona. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's awkward. I will uh, take a safer course of action. I'll just proto belt out if you don't mind. Uh, please, please don't land any skill shots on yep, me. Don't know where anyone else is. Oh, yeah. Booster, uh, so, uh, getting out of that one quickly. <laughs> Oriana did get the full Seraph's Embrace after a little farming, so yep. sitting on two items. Also has the lucidity boots, so we'll be able to throw out shockwaves at basically every big team fight that pops up. Pretty good. Very true. Still needs Talia to be very wary of the So won't be dying to a lot of stuff as people engage on her. And we got Gale Force Rapid Fire on the gym, so he can... Yeah, everyone gotta get close to that two-item breakpoint. Uh, this is a very... Stacked of brush cheese by that is uh, by GBC. That's a budget death brush right that there. A very budget fanatic brush. As Ludiverse, I'm sorry, I, I don't know. I don't think you here. win against poor. Actually, Trindamir. he might. Honestly, Echo, Echo's a fast. It's one item, Echo. One half. Dulax and Mac that was Navish, a fast fishing. Julia. Oriana speed up plus wall surfing pretty yep. fast. Command distance does give your teammates movement speed for reasons. <laughs> Ease a new tail where Penguin it's, dabs it's a command. to elaborate. It's a command. Oriana's telling you to speed up. And do, do you want to be on the other end of a shockwave? You know? 
just gonna be a farm up here, waiting for more objectives. About one twenty. One minute until dragon. Fairness. That, that's when we'll be able to talk about. Oh no. no! You fall for the classic ruse. No one is here in side lane, but it was I, Trindamir, who is actually dying to you. I mean, I they don't can't do think... anything, Trindamir. Uh, I made a mistake. Oh no! Two uh... is here, though, so they have some damage now. Okay. Queen doesn't have that much MR yet. Going strong has the ulti. I'm not going sure to really burn himself. it here. This is kind of risky. Yeah, it needs to get out of the tower. Oh, oh. oh. and good flash. Kill. Try to get good away flash. from that dragon kick. But can just look efficient for guys. Uh, oh. like you are here way too that long, is the fact my friend. Good flash. Oh, but fails. That was a really throw. good fight. Jin heals five the backing oh. Trindamir. <laughs> Young got a nice boost to his uh, HP pool there right before the end as Mac Damage needs to also not be there. That seismic shove was insane. It prevented Zeri from speeding up and being able to yeah, continue no. the chase. That is a lot of flashes down on uh, uh, Oh, Vale immediately cleanses, trying Vail, to get something uh, done. Shockwave, though, puts him further away from Leona as the curtain goal comes out, but it's a little bit for range. Back cancel top oh, lane, Ludiverse this under is fire big. by Young uh, Oh, he gets him with a Gale Force auto. Didn't, didn't even have the ulti. Chicken, didn't even have the Unfortunately, goes in favor of Jindamir that time. Yep. I mean, that's just surprise attack. He, he's in shop, man. He's waiting to do the TP down to Dragon. Yeah. He's not. He's not out here. Surely, surely we won't see Lee Sin still an objective of third. Sure, time. Surely not. Uh, as they put it in a very good position for him to come over wall at. Uh, oh, they learned. Understands. He hit it though. It's resetting. Uh, Duckwings does miss the ulti, so it is still. Oh, oh, uh, okay. That booster is he, very he thought, dead. He thought he could get away with it that time. Yep. Shall transcend. Couldn't. Bur the flash was not enough, right. unfortunately. So uh, that that's might be bear. Two dragons for each team. That Queen Ana has on no mana. mana, so I do uh, not agree with TP. this. Has TP. Has TP. I do not agree with this. She should TP. She should back TP. She should back TP right now. If they want to do bear, I mean, they should back TP. She should have done that immediately after the dragon, but... I agree. I don't know why she's still here. Oh, she got awesome. blue. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Fine. Fine. Yeah, reasonable. Let me grab mid -tier. This Baron should go down pretty darn quickly with Trindamir here. As well as... As long as Julia can uh, stay away. versus around, around the backside. Might be able to find a pick on a Jewel Axe. Parallel Convergence. Doesn't tag anyone but the Trindamir. Duckling's in the pit. Stun on to the jungler. The jungler's gone. Baron down to 300. 350, 150. Secured Lunar. by the Luniverse. And Penn State just mop up the fight. A bad Baron call. That's Orion not able to reach that. It's a, a desperation Baron. I don't agree with I don't Baron even know why they went for it. They just didn't do it fast there. enough. They went for the blue buff instead. Or he just backing TPing. I don't think play. you even like go for that. I think you just all recall. Or like Oriana and someone else recalls Oriana has TP and can get there. Penn State tries to go on there. And you have Talia wall. You can use that to lock to like get close enough to a fight beforehand. And now but, Penn State uh, gonna rest back a ginormous amount of this gold. Uh, and actually go ahead. Money. 3k already gonna be 4k plus if they get an inhibitor here. 27 minutes. And yeah, now game solidly in Penn State's favor. That was just. I mean, that was also just a very poorly played fight. That was by an GBC. unfortunate play. That was a horribly played fight. Brown there. They had their split. They didn't know where Luniverse was. Came around the back. And then there's Veil with the Lulu. Yeah. Didn't have communication between, like, the AD carry was split up. Oriana had no mana to fight anybody. Didn't have Shockwave or anything available. Just a really bad that time. But as a. Uh, we need to not be here. Taking turret shots, you know? It's okay, and Queen Ana's dead. Very good. Uh, Jewel Axe in from behind. It's good flash good. done. The turn call, though. Able to finish one off. Luniverse, very low. Luniverse Needs to probably pop the ulti as Jewel Axe. Out for now, but Luniverse is still here. Good shots here. The CC chain is perfect. All right. And that's two you know, barons down. That's really, that's a really good play. That's two barons right there. Because Trindamir is off on his own uh, doing a uh, hashtag Trindamir thing. Yeah. You know? And now, just getting back into it. Trinomir just gonna split push for the time being. Vale probably gonna go respond to that wave as to get some Baron Mans, push Trinomir back off of that area. But with mid, mid inhibitor down, it's gonna be hard for a lot of this uh, team to really get back out on the map easily. So, yeah. Tweeon gonna Hopefully have to be can, careful. Uh... I would still say Vale needs to be careful too. It's still, she might be a very strong Zeri, but that is still a Trindamir. Yeah. yeah. Barry does have the full team fight item, so 
it's significantly less single target damage than, say, if Zeri decided to go the crit build, but you do have the Lulu on your side, so I mean, come on. We all know how fun Lulu is to play against. We, we all oh. know. We've all had that one solo queue game. ADC is DC, so Rift Guardian yeah. having some trouble here. with. We'll be waiting on that. Yep, so, we'll see. This is the closest game we've had in this series. The closest game I think we've had all day. I don't think it's... Game 1 was over by now. Yes, Game 1 was very over. Game 2 was also, I think, over. Yeah, we're gonna... Luniverse has a cool hat, he has a cool sword, and he's got his proto-belt already. Yeah, Echo is, is now a very big problem. I, this, is one my, very this, big... this is one of my things with the person, Oriana, yeah. is blinding this champion when you know for a fact... That the enemy mid plays Echo. Yeah, he played is Echo just, last it, game. It's just insane to me that that was even like a consideration. He just played Echo last game and it won the game. Well, it did. The Echo specifically didn't win the game, but they won the game with the Echo. Yeah, it so, was. I mean, I mean, because Oriana just cannot do anything against this champion later. So you gotta rely on the team fights, which Echo is a good team fighter as well. Yeah, it's not like he's in the scope. So, can just one shot your Jin, can one shot your Ori, and suddenly you're down a lot of damage. Can just one shot till he is as well. Yep, very true, very true. So, it is an issue. Yeah. And right now, the bigger issue, Veil, vale, 6 and 4 on the Zeri. As this dragon comes up in around another minute and a half time. GBC and PSU White both on the two Drake markers, so still 10 minutes before anyone can get a soul. As we get the classic pause glitch. My favorite. Need to break some new ground. There we go. We broke some new ground. Yep. We have uh, broken the pause glitch that happens when you pause game. Exciting. In spectator. But uh, gold actually kind of evening back up after some of these kills come through. A lot of farm being picked up mid lane thanks to these super minions pushing in. As you can see here, gold leads already shrunk to just under 2k from a 4k gold lead. So, yes, the kills top it's, lane help, but this is substantially just getting more gold. Specifically to game. Rift Guardian. Poppy luckily did get the Force of Nature. So now, until Talia and or Oriana end up getting the void staff, uh, Poppy's chilling. We need to be very careful down here. There's four bots. Dragon There's up a lot of people in this bot lane area. They do know that Zeri is over that wall because of that W, and now they know that Lee Sin is over that wall. Yep. Knowledge. And Queen Ed needs to be very careful top lane here. Yeah, this the is... top lane matchup is abysmal. less than ideal. It is abysmal. You really need Chindamir up here to do this, but no. Oriana is the only doesn't one have with teleport, and uh, Chindamir is... Not dead yet. Ooh, Ludiverse could probably took that. In. I feel like uh, we're just gonna get the Drake and clear out mid. See the super wave pushing in. Uh, yeah. Not a bad idea. Just clear this out. Make sure you get your CS and stuff. Get the wave prow. Give this one gonna over let, to PSU. Gonna let Jin farm up to get that Infinity Edge. Cause once he hits that with his Lord Dons and the Rapid Fire, he's gonna be dealing damage once he gets that Infinity Edge. Young, under fire, does not care. He's gonna walk it out. And it looks like Penn State gonna try to force down this bot lane tier two as Julax coming through. Booster gonna knock him off the wall though as a kick back in. Sonya's gonna buy it some time, but I don't think this one matters. Ducklings, the easy kill. With the TP in from Luder that midway getting a pissed in as well. I don't think Julax expected the Lee Sin to be in that little corridor oh. right there. We up, looking for Ludiverse, Gale Force forward into the W. Now the E goes forward, has the ulti. Try to look back as the inhibitor's being taken though. Here comes the curtain call One, again. Everyone's full HP. This two. really isn't going to do much. Immediately stop. cancels the ulti. And free inhibitor this down. This is looking like they're just going to walk out of the, the base. Yeah. Now, Penn State is sort of taking it slow and steady. They do yeah, know the Baron is coming up. They don't want a Baron throw again. It's like the previous Baron. Yeah, they saw in the last game. Baron throw did a GBC for the 3K Goldly. They would prefer to not repeat the problem. 
Yeah, that would be ideal if they don't just slow the game at Baron. By the way, George Brown pushing in, grabbing some vision control in the area, making sure they can at least see what they're walking it is into. A lot harder to steal a Baron on Talia than it is on Lee Sin, I will tell you that much. So. Very true. Unless they can get a miracle team fight, because Jin still doesn't have Infinity Edge, and I don't think he's got enough money. Uh, no, not close. He needs 600 more about. So he's probably not going to get it by the time Penn State decides they want to go take the Baron. Yep. As the pings are already coming out on it. I mean, what's interesting about the uh, 2,000 of this gold lead is actually on Lulu, by the way. Huh. Uh, uh Orianna is dead. dead. Yeah. Yep, this and, is the silent uh, match. That's Baron. That is Baron. Very good play by Luna. Very is that four items. By Very the terrible way. play by Kinado. You can't Jin you can't bought be there. Guardian Angel. And probably like, I'm not gonna get money for Infinity Edge just is one of if not the uh, Alright, well we're gonna have the staring contest here from DPC. They determine if they want to fight this Baron or if they don't. One to be used as Stun two. comes in mid lane. They're gonna instead look for Luniverse. Still has ultimate, by the way. So this is a little bit. Yep. The old top of Oh, them. lots of damage, but in the top side, fights raging out. Dulak taking down Veil, but Rift Guardian Gale Force oh. grabs the kill, and they shut down onto Zeri. We only look for more. Trindamir still has the ulti coming up. Davish posturing and. That's a big Baron Goblin. Still three Baron. did not want Talia to die there. The no, flash, flash heal Gale Force into kill. melee range in on the Zeri. Yep. And mind you, Zeri is basically built like a melee champion. Now, actually, this is going to be a pretty hard fight to win as Veil and Ludivers down. Booster is all of your damage for the side of Pente. But they do have Baron up minions here, which means there's just not enough wave clear around. They, yeah, just gonna have this engage, have double stacked super minions pushing into bot side that they need to deal with. Yeah, that's a bit rough. Ludov, if they can stop the recall, Ludov, oh no, his TP's not up. Oop, Duckling's trying to cancel I've backs. Been... Duckling's trying, yeah, Duckling's canceling all the backs. No one's gonna get back to He's just running. Nexus turret's Ooh. gonna go down. I've seen this one in LCS. I've seen minions do this before. It is their, it is their call. This is the highest service down. a minion can offer. He's still alive. One it does the force them to go alive. respond to this while... Barely. Yeah, Penn State now an opportunity to push out and grab Dragon Vision for Soul. Again, Soul not that terribly amazing. It's still Soul. You can't start pushing it out. It's yet again. Yep. But I mean, I mean, I, I, Cloud Soul is very dangerous. Do you want to know why? Inform me. D -d -d very. She will be going at Mach 10 when she, if they get Cloud Soul and she presses ult and has Lulu W. That Zeri will be going so fast, it'll be, do you remember that old Viego bug where he would get like 10,000 move speed and just start teleporting how, how across the map? That, that's what's going to happen to Vale. So he's he becomes, so, be so what you're saying so is he fast. becomes Blue Cane. He becomes, well, <laughs> he becomes not, not even Blue Cane, like there's no walking animation. He's just going to be teleporting. That, like, that's All the right. thing. Echo is still splitting top, but they've brought Trindamir down, so... It's going to be resolved to fight this breakout. Echo going to at okay. least get an inhibitor turn, if not the whole darn tower. Nato, no teleport. Yeah, got to get that's free. A, that's a yeah. really good Jinsha. This is going to be two inhibitors. And Echo can get both here. He could die and get both. I think he's backing off. Both. Yeah, he will just get one. Everyone is up there really fast. As, oh, stun onto the enemy 80. Gary Duckwing finds the knockup on the three now. Booster Cry coming. Veil on the side. And here comes Luniverse! Taking two very low. Resurrecting on one down. Another great kickback in the back by Rift Guardian. Not long for Not the Rift. Is, that is going to be the game. A beautiful flank from the Echo. The Trinity going to try to do what he can. But the finally, the cancer has manifested with Summer's Rift. Dying defeated. Rift. Shut down for Luniverse, 10 and 5 on the yeah. Echo. Can someone get this man out of this cave as the Nexus falls? And Penn State will come back to take this game 3 to 2. You know, it, may, it makes sense for Echo to also win this game because there's an Echo of the last game where they won. Huh. I don't regret that joke.
Now, very well played for Penn State. I, I mean, brought it back. George Brown just too many mistakes in Game Three. They, they too got a bit too mistakes. greedy in the Game Three for that on that Baron play. The That's Baron, where it all sort of went down. Trying to track with inhibitors down the macro plays, pushing too far into certain lanes. It's just. The draft didn't help him either, but that was a pretty minor part, to be honest. Yeah. Either way, very well played by, or very good games by both teams, at the very least. Uh, fun to finally see a three-game series. It's a best of three, and we got the three. You love to see it. Yep. Well, that is going to be it for our coverage of the Nittany Invitational here for today, at least as far as I'm aware. So, we going to be coming back here next weekend for the semifinals <laughs> and finals. And with that, that is going to be all we have for stream today. So, once again, I've been Infamous Trash, joined here by Soccer Wars. Thank you, man, for showing up. Yeah, no problem. Always a pleasure to get some casting in. Yep, and we will catch you guys. Games. Yep, we'll catch you guys next time back on the Rift.